This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Seriously? Checkmate! Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew! Okay, so let's send a challenge. Challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> so that I give him up a bone. He wants to be even rude.
welcome to the first round of this 10th and very special edition of Norway Chess, where the most dynamic, fighting chess players battle it out to determine who is the best. And I'm Yvonne Kahauska, and it is a great pleasure to be commenting on all the action alongside Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson. Thank you. I'm thrilled. Is it the most dynamic and combative chess players? It's fighting chess. Yeah. They don't have a choice, They're, right? Exactly. If they make a draw, they have to play Armageddon. Exactly. No way out. There is no way out, as you say. And uh, it's certainly hardcore chess here. And I'm keeping eye, an eye out on the players because they are about to start in any minute now. And uh, talking about time controls, uh, well, actually, first of all, let's check out the pairings. Yesterday's Blitz tournament determined the seedings and also the pairings. And we can see Magnus Carlsen gets to play white alongside Wang Hao. And Wesley So plays white against Timur Rajabov. So exciting matchups here. Yeah, the world champion with the white pieces against Wang Hao, who came out of retirement for this event. There has to be a little rust. And Carlsen will be looking. For blood, he will try to get Wang Hao yeah. out of theory, play a chess game and hope that the Chinese star is rusty. And uh, we can see the players have made the first move. And uh, is that a Reti I see on the board? Knight f3 and d5? Yeah, knight f3, d5, g3. Um, I never know when it's called a Reti and when not, I guess. It depends on how the game goes. Could still become a Catalan or a King's Indian attack. Yeah. But he's trying to surprise Wang Hao, not something that Carlsen usually does. Mm -hmm. And uh, quite interesting enough, uh, I saw Wang Hao did an interview uh, with uh, Teva Tu Shak, and uh, he was saying that for a long time he was uh, struggling with health issues with his stomach. Oh. And uh, only recently has he felt better and well enough to start playing chess. And so when he got the invitation, he was like, okay, sure. And uh, baptism of fire. You begin again. You you retire from chess and then you start playing and you have to face the world champion with the back with Isn't the black that pieces. Some awesome pictures that <laughs> Chess Twenty Four found of us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. In my most colourful top ever that I wore because it was freezing in Reykjavik. Uh, Vishy said he was happy to be in a cold country <clears throat> mm -hmm. here in Norway because it was so hot in India. Are you going to the Chess Olympiad? I am. Yes, I'm looking forward to, the, what is it, 40 degrees and sweltering heat. Yeah. Okay, um, well, Wang Hao seems to have been surprised, but uh, this is, I guess, standard. So shall we move on to see whether there's been any action or surprises in any of the other games? Wesley So playing the Italian. That yeah. is hardly a surprise. Knight to have six pawn to d3. One of the big positions that are debated at the highest level since five years this is really all the rage we'll see how rajabov a very diligent worker on his openings he doesn't like to play that much but he does like to study the italian here is what he does if he goes for the direct plan with castles and then potentially d5 or if he goes for slower sneakier plans with d6 a6 d6 a5 mm -hmm. but he will have something up his sleeve yeah yeah, we saw in some games that they've been delaying this d6 move and just castling. I saw that in some of the blitz. Okay, d6 on the board. And uh, yeah, well, we should also mention that the players are playing a very unusual time control. It's two hours for all moves and the increments only get kick in after move 40. And it's a 10 second, second increment, which isn't that much. If the game is drawn, well, we get to see our favorite thing in chess, an Armageddon match. The white will have 10 minutes on the clock and black seven minutes. And again, well, one second increment, it gets added after move 40. So white has to win. Yeah, white has to win. It seems very trendy these days to choose white. I'm not quite sure whether this is good strategy or not, but uh, Always depends on the time control. With 10 versus 7 and this, an extra second, my hunch would be that black is to be preferred, but I'm sure they put some thought mm -hmm. into it to have it more or less balanced. But in general, the shorter the time control, the more the extra time yeah. should matter. With 7 minutes, it feels like the advantage of a draw being enough yeah. should be quite important. 
Okay, so shall we have a, a wander around the other boards? Uh, what's happening between Giri and Topalov? I was expecting that one to be an open Sicilian. That was my personal prediction. Almost. And it's a close <laughs> Catalan. Next best thing. <laughs> with, a, with a bishop b4 flicked in. Yeah, this is one of the subtle, subtle lines here. Bishop b4, bishop d2, and now retreating, arguing this bishop is worse placed on d2 than on c1. When these closed lines, it often can go to b2 directly. Mm -hmm. So the d2 square might be used by knight. And I think it's a system that Topalov has used quite a bit also in his world championship match against Anand. They had some interesting games here. So he's sticking to his old guns. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'll be looking forward to following that game because it's actually an opening I play. Oh. So I quite like it with the black pieces. And, uh, well, well he, he'll probably go c6. Yeah, the standard plan is c6, b6, Get the bishop b7 position. or bishop a6. Recently, there were some experiments with c6, and then depending on what it does, to delay b6, play some h6. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. sure. I mean, that's my understanding is that the critical lines are when uh, white actually puts the knight on c3 pretty early. And sometimes you don't even bother de developing the light square bishop. Just go to knight c3, get ready to go e4. And uh, So well. aggressive. Hmm? So aggressive, yeah. I was expecting Anish to play bishop f4 and keep this pawn protected Yeah. at all times. Yeah. What, is, what is the line that we're playing in? This knight e5 maybe? Something like this. I'm uh, rusty on the details, but there were were such lines in white. Maybe has a mini advantage with the bishops. Maybe not. Yeah, no. mm, small advantage, right? But uh, black can probably chip away at that. I'm a big fan of like the stable pawn structure, in, especially in the middle of the board. Topalov had some old specialties of his here, which I'm trying to... Probably wasn't this position. Some DC-95 he's experimented with all, all kinds of things. But he does seem to be surprised by Anish's choice. Mm -hmm. well, he is, he does uh, Topalov play this type of opening with the black pieces? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's... <coughs> Been, been part of his repertoire. You have to do something right after knight c3. I think he likes playing the semi Slav or maybe the Ragozin. Yeah. Then you have to deal with the obnoxiously solid Catalan. I'm sure he doesn't enjoy it that much, but he has to live with it. <laughs> In deep thought. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we have a Catalan. We have a Emarozzi, three bishop b5 Czech Sicilian. Vichy, that's not, the, that's not the way to crush Maxime. you got to go for, for the Nidorf. It was quite funny. Um, before the game started, we had a bet with uh, our producers and uh, actually Ellen Nielsen, <laughs> who is here on behalf of Chess24, taking pictures, uh, streaming, and, and just, uh, just being active on social media. And uh, our producers were quite adamant that Vichy was going to go for the main lines and uh, I was like, no, I think he's going to close. You close right the position, again. yeah. Play some kind of Morox. Well, I was thinking Moscow, Bishop out to. Yeah, it's Vichy's first tournament game since, I keep getting it wrong, I think 2019. So he might also want to feel his way into it. And the setup he plays, this Marozzi putting the pawns on c4 and e4, it's a very, very solid setup for white where things go well for black, he equalizes. If things don't go well, you end up a little squeezed. But it's not a very risky construction for white. And interesting that Anand aims for it, but also that MVL doesn't go for the more combative move, three knight to d7, but instead mm -hmm. plays along with his line. But he's probably done some homework. Maxime Vachela Graf, who's skipping the Olympiad, we just heard. France uh. without Ali Reza, without Maxime. Is that official? That's from a very official source. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and Maxim actually told told us that over dinner, so I wasn't quite sure whether to go public. 
No, no, all told as not over over podcast. That's <laughs> as as public. Okay. As it as it gets. Uh, okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, I agree with you here. Actually, it does seem my understanding in this type of position is that this is like a moroxy, but better because that uh, bad light square bishop isn't on the board, and you're simply going to put the rooks in the middle of the in the like rook d1, rook c1, and just slowly ask black what moves are you going to be playing yeah i'm not sure about the details after this move a6 generally black has the option to play the position slowly like typical moves are rook fc8 and then even reshuffling the queen here but that's supposed to be somewhat worse so i would guess he wants to do something more direct with a6 to take and play b5 and anand will have to Consider stopping that by playing a4, which would also be a typical move. Mm -hmm. I do not, I do not know the details. Looks like Maxim is happy with his choice. Going for a walk there, Vichy calmly retreats the knight. Knight b3, also stopping b5. Yeah. Okay. Maybe also hinting at c5 in some positions. Right, it could be a direct threat, right? If he goes knight e5, just play c5. Yeah, I wasn't sure how this continues if the knight comes here. Mm. The bishop might have to go back, or maybe it can go no, forward. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't look so good. So hang on a second. So after knight e5, what is the plan? Knight d2? Not sure, knight d2 looks a bit passive, but maybe. Queen e2, maybe? Maybe queen e2, and then, if needed, knight e2 can be played. Yeah, rook fc8, knight here, uh, at least for now b5 is stopped. In general, in these positions, if white manages to stabilize, he'll be better if he gets rook. Yeah, whatever. He said yeah. rooks to the middle, b3. So black should try something to keep him busy before that happens. Some e6, d5, or b5. Looks like both sides have done their homework. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's have a look at uh, the other two games. So we had... Uh, Where to begin? Mount Yarov Tari? Yep. Oh, this old line. Knight to f3 against the Nimzo Indian by Mount Yarov. Like castles, which, yeah, nowadays is a very established line. In the old days people played c5 or b6 here mainly, but nowadays both castles and playing d5 transposing to the Ragozin have a good reputation. d5 probably not Tari's cup of tea because I don't think he's a Ragozin player. If white had done this he typically plays I think the whatever it's called the semi Tarash pawn to c5. So now the of maybe trying to move over him here but he castles and they play an old favorite of mine, this move queen c2. Mm -hmm. And since it's a favorite of mine, you can guess, it's a very risk-free, dry, <laughs> unexciting line. Bishop g5 is where the fun starts here, which is something that Mamed Yarov has played plenty, but probably anticipates Tari would be quite ready for it. I know how this goes, some, some madness here. Oh, okay. I think this line actually is has been played by Mamed Yarov more than once with insanity, but mm -hmm. not today. Now it's important to have that element of surprise, right? So uh, Queen C2 and then what was the response there? C5? Yeah, C5. Both C5 and D5 are supposed to be fine here. C5 is the traditional reaction to which play gets quite forcing. D takes C. Now Black is saying, you know, F3 is nice, but you can no longer control the E4 square. So what I'm trying to do is use the knight to control the square, even if it takes some time. All of this is very theoretical. G3 is the best move for white. Knight takes, bishop to G2. Knight C to E4, also the main line. Short castles, and here he goes bishop takes C3, Tari, which is not the main move. The historical main line is knight takes, B takes, bishop E7, pawn to E4 to d6, which black is supposed to hold, but black has to be precise. And Tari is saying, no thank you. Could I have this pawn, please? Uh, 
I'm a bit confused. I guess he prepared this when I checked this, which admittedly is some time ago. I thought this was better for white. So I'm curious what he has in mind. Knight to d4. Hits the knight on e4, so there's no time to take. Pawn goes to d5. C takes d. E takes d. And bishop to f4. Okay, now you can get greedy, right? Gotta take, right? Yeah, gotta take. That's what all this, the strategy has been leading up to, but hang on. Yeah, I don't think that there are any direct tactics, but if white just takes, let's say, and rook c1, yeah, I have it's to still head be a back. bit unpleasant. Yeah, because actually I don't have any squares after knight to e4. You can just go f3, right? And my knight is trapped, so retreat that knight. But it, so I guess you have to go knight a4. Yeah. Which is. Uh, it's mm, a bit offside. It is a bit offside. But also, look at those two bishops. I mean, they're amazing. The rook is coming to c7. The, this is full compensation for one pawn. Yeah, at the very least, I don't know if there are any direct ideas. Knight b5, but also just a quietish move like rook b1. Looks pretty nice for white. Looks great. So, Aryan. Okay. What are you doing? Well, we'll he see. He does go queen c4. He doesn't take the pawn. I know queen c5. This is somewhat more pleasant for white. Not just any rook to c1. White has the bishops. Is there a... Yeah, okay, so rook c1, and then I guess, can you still kind of claim that there's a lot of uncomfortable pressure on the c pawn, and maybe just go bishop d7, yeah. stick a rook on c8. No, well, that's what he's going to have to do. I'm still a bit intrigued that he thinks this is okay. But Aryan, he does do his homework. Had very little time to do homework though, because he was. When was he invited to the tournament? Like four days, five days, five days four ago. Days before four days the ago. event, yeah. and uh, it was very interesting actually. But he managed to get the services of Kirill Alexienko, so a very very strong player. A very short notice, it has to be said. Rick. Yeah, <clears throat> very strong Russian player. There are no Russians in this tournament, but Kirill as a second. Of course, I'm sure is welcome. He recently left Russia and went to live in Spain. If I'm yeah, he was in Spain. Him. He he was in Spain. I don't know whether he's living there, but uh, he, he mentioned to to me that yeah, yeah, quite a few Russian players have uh, had to leave, unfortunately. Um, yeah, rook c8. Maybe rook fc1 is also too too slow. Might not be a big threat to take here yet. Mardiarov. Also seems surprised by Tari's choice, studying the position after queen c5. The Azeri veteran. You did an interview with him, no, about his, I did. his I, upbringing? Yeah, it was incredibly fascinating. Um, so I, before I ha did the interview with him, I actually didn't know anything. I just assumed that uh, it, was, it was quite privileged, you know, because you assume that there's uh, a lot of support for chess in Azerbaijan and, and he actually told told me that no there wasn't too much support that uh, it was only at the age of 14 when he was 2200 and he looked around at his contemporaries and he was like okay they're grandmasters so I'm gonna have to work an extra 10 hours a day to get my chess up to scratch Oof, that's yeah. a long day and so he would get up in the morning at four go to the park study chess then uh do you think sometimes people maybe exaggerate, maybe well, he, he, add an hour here or there? Maybe. That sounds like maybe. a lot of hours. Ten maybe. hours every day? Four Ten, in the morning? Four in the morning, five hours chess, went to school. When did he go to sleep? Uh, like six? No. He, uh, you don't get in the no, 10 no. hours plus school? Yeah, so he had, I think probably school finishes at three, and then you go and do another five hours, finish at eight, and uh, then the cycle starts again the next day. 
And he did say, he's very, very honest, and he did say that this wasn't a life. He, he wasn't doing anything but chess. And uh, when he kind of reached the top in the world, he kind of took a step back and said, okay, now, now I want to live a little bit. Now I want to have some fun and uh, I was drink a shocked. bit. And that he said he didn't drink alcohol before age 22. Yeah. Because I'm sure it's true. I was just surprised. I mean, I've seen him around at junior tournaments where he was amazing at an, an mm -hmm. early age. But he always looked like an open party type of guy. So I'm sure or I'm <laughs> surprised he didn't come in touch with any, with any alcohol before that. What? I would have thought. No, I can, I can remember him vaguely, but not in junior events. I can just remember him suddenly appearing at these European team championships, and he looked very serious. Okay. Um, so, but then, you know, I, I met him in 2006, and yeah, obviously strong hmm. and uh, enjoying life a little bit more, not just so chess. The moral of the story is even these people we admire for being these great <laughs> natural chess players, great attackers, like. <clears throat> going off their instincts. They get good because they study chess a lot? Yes. Ugh. Yeah, but that's the vibe I've got from absolutely everyone. Do you know anyone? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you also worked incredibly hard. 14 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> I got up at two in the morning, <laughs> went to my school, yeah. sat there till eight, six hours, yeah. and after school, another eight hours. Yeah. Um, no, but of course I was obsessed with chess. I don't think there's any grandmaster that hasn't put in whatever mm. number you want to name. There are 10,000 10, hours there are. Yeah. No shortcuts, unfortunately. No? Yeah. I'm not sure I believe this 10,000 hours. I think that was a bit of a mystical number, rather like the 10,000 steps. They just said it because it sounds it's good. good round number. No? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why 10,000? So mm. I think Have it's actually... Have you done the math if you like to, let's say, three hours a day? Per year, that's like a thousand. Mm -hmm. it takes ten years. Could add mm -hmm. up, no? Yeah, could add, could add up. But now you get all these like little ones who are becoming grandmasters. But they have their 12. ten thousand hours. They start playing Blitz at six online, and they do more than three hours. Yeah, they do more than three yeah. hours. Yeah. Okay. Shall we? Uh, let's revisit the game between uh, Magnus and Wang Hao. Yeah, Wang Hao. Getting a little creative in the opening here. He plays his knight d7, which I think we spoke about Alexenko earlier. I think I've seen him do this maybe mm -hmm. first. Looks very dumb, this maneuver, knight d7, followed by knight b6. But it has some logic. It does fight against white c4, which is a natural pawn break. It allows his bishop to get out, which usually is also countered by that pawn break. And most importantly, it is liked by Lila Zero, one of the big trendy chess engines and a lot of people took notice but here they are yeah. putting a knight on b6 taking two moves in the opening no problem yeah and uh, this next move b3 very popular move i think it's uh, a big favorite of uh, my co-commentator on the champions chess tour david howe i've noticed one pattern he loves to control the knight circuit by pawns Makes Good strategy, sense. yeah. Limit the knight. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the bishop develops and uh, Magnus challenging, feeling an aggressive mood. Knight to h4. And I would be tempted here to actually go either bishop g4 or bishop e4. Yes, knight 4 always looks silly because we've all been taught that a knight on the rim is dim. But if this bishop is allowed to stay here, it will be very hard to shake the black position at black. Even if he got an extra move like h6, then e6, knight f6, c6, whatnot. Black will be will be very, very solid. So white has to do something quickly, fighting yeah. for the initiative. And once again, the computers have pointed out no, that bishop is so stable after h6. Why don't bother? Why not bother it before h6 is played? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a great square. After bishop e4, f3, it has to go back. And you could argue if provoking f3 is a weakness or if it helps occupying the center. After bishop g4, a similar story. White goes h3. And once again, the question is if these have oh. been weaknesses or space grabs. 
But uh, what about any of these counter-attacking ideas? Because uh, you get them often in the, in the Slavs. So say, for instance, on your h3, g4 idea, can you just suddenly go, right, now I'm going to go e6. You attack my piece, I attack yours. That's a good point. I'll still track down the bishop, but you'll probably win a bit of time. Or maybe... Where is this going? Um, a bit worried I'll get checkmated here in the next three moves. Not sure Magnus will go to such <laughs> length to trap that bishop. No, that's a good point. So g4 might be premature, or are we are we missing something here? GH, queen h4 looks good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you're right. What does he want to do after bishop g4 then? Um, he, uh, he has to go. Maybe just uh, maybe he just retreats the knight. Sorry, he just goes h3, g4, and then just uh, once the knight is attacked, just head back and go whatever. Ah, sorry, g4, e6. E e so, e6. Yeah. yeah, but if we don't get a hold of that bishop, this whole operation hasn't been very successful. No, so. Yeah, the cousin. Okay, now you can go. I like your knight. Yeah, but it's the same problem, like bishop e4. Bishop e4, four, yeah. Check scares me a bit. Maybe it's what he wants, continuing his tradition of slightly dubious looking opening play. But today he's got knight f3 and g3. I don't think he plays knight h4. Mm -hmm. Just to be funny. A bit confused now. Okay, I'm going to check out the theory. Let's have a look. I doubt there's a lot of theory for this position. I'd even be surprised if there were any games here. Um, I'm usually wrong. Let's uh, have a look. It's 97. Check out my database, knight b6. Yeah, no games. You're right. And uh, someone did have a look last year about what happens after bishop g4. And they analyzed two lines, bishop a3 and h3. Bishop a3, maybe that's the move. That's funny. <laughs> Trying to stop e6. And potentially still going for h3, g4. Ah, yeah. That's a cool move. I guess that's what he has in mind. Yeah, bishop a3 could be interesting, but I mean, maybe black can just go, yeah, whatever, e6. Yeah, but then at least we lose the right to castle. Got to be worth a little something. Yeah. The thing is, I'm a caro player, so I'm not that fast with castling. Ah, oh, you're used to. I, I'm also used to the, the light square bishop disappearing, so I'm like, okay. Yeah. Sounds rough. <laughs> Join team e4, e5. We, we put the king here. Keep all the bishops, it's, it's yeah. a great place. The problem was is that I had a bad experience with e4, e5. Mm. I chose to learn the Archangel, which going from a Karo player to the Archangel, yeah, the sharpest. Uh. <laughs> and I got smashed a few times, and mm. after that, I thought, mm, it's not for me. I, I think so. I should have been taught the Berlin or some kind of Breyer, the most solid. What is the most solid e4, e5 line apart from the Berlin? Berlin is up there. Then Marshall is pretty solid, but you need to know some stuff to mm -hmm. get that solidity. The, the Zaitsev, the Briar. I'm sure there's a bunch of boring lines out there. <laughs> yeah. All um, the players here are specialists. You can ask them. Anish knows his Berlin, Wesley, Rajabov, all of them. Except Maxim. He has no clue. With okay. white, no. Maxim is actually a serious specialist on the Berlin with white. Yeah, yeah. He's it's the Berlin white. killer. Every time I see him playing in these openings, he is not afraid to take on the end game, and uh, he beats the strongest in it quite easily. So, how is he doing now in this particular position? Because it looked like things were at a critical juncture. You know, he needed to strike out and do something, but he didn't actually challenge the pawn on c4. Instead, he just plays e6. Um, yeah, sort of a typical move in these positions as well, controlling the d5 square and maybe hoping to get d5 one day. 
Although here I don't see how that's achieved so easily. Rook d8, this bishop b6. And white has a pretty good grip on that square. So Maxim also took some time, maybe he's mixing plans here a little bit. But you could also argue the knight on b3 is awkwardly placed. So why not stop knight d5, go e6, rook c8. I don't get the position, to be honest with you. I, uh, I, I agree with you. I, I've always liked this position for white. You know, okay, yes, the knight on is misplaced, but then, you know, just pile up on the target. D6. I'm like a dog with a bone. When I see a positional weakness, I'm going to go for it. Oof, <laughs> relentless. Yeah. <laughs> one track mind. Mm. So, go, yeah, I would just go queen e2, rook d1, slowly, slowly. I don't care if black gets slightly active, you know, as long as I have that uncomfortable pressure, it's not going to be easy for black. Sounds like a good plan, and yeah, Maxime took some time here. Mm -hmm. I also have my doubts if e6 is the way to go. Yeah, computer, no, no, computer has it on his list of acceptable moves. Okay, and what kind of e6, plan does it suggest? Queen e2, queen e2. just wants to sit tight. Queen c7, something, something. Yeah, white is a little better. Yeah. Which sounds about right. Okay. Switch it off again. Just curious. So there's that. There's the neutral knights on the rim in the World Champions game. Didn't didn't you tweet something about the knight on the edge? The ah, yeah, but it's a. Uh, there's some debates about the correct expression in German. Ah, it's okay, okay. Springer am Rand bringt Kummer und Schand, which it used to be. Or Springer am Rand ist ein freies Land. And now there are some other voices saying it should be um, <laughs> something else. And, and they're not sure about Springer, so it's it's complicated. Okay. Topic. Very heated debate. It's an etymological debate there. Yeah. And uh, did you express an opinion on this a very cutting edge subject? Um, I got instructed to support the cause. Now I can't remember what expression they wanted. <laughs> um, what was it? I'm not a very good ambassador for the new message. If I can yeah, I know. Am Rand ist ein Pferd nichts wert, something like that. Okay. But I'm not sure it will catch on. Because the problem in German is a knight, it's called Springer. But most chess aficionados think it should be fiat, which means horse. I'm not sure, is it a debate in English as well that it should be a horse, not a knight? No, it most certainly isn't a debate. Why not? It, it looks like a horse. It looks I like a horse. Every day I have this conversation. Really? Yeah. Every day? Literally. Every With day. who? I have all these, <clears throat> I operate in very influential circles of powerful people <laughs> yeah. that notice that you can get some clicks on Twitch and YouTube oh, by okay. hosting some chess tournaments, but they refuse to accept that it's it's a knight or a springer. So they all call it Fiat and I try to insist it's not, but I'm, I'm losing okay. that battle. So now it's... It's just a, it's now, a, it's now become I'm a horse. Ist ein Fiat, nichts wert. Yeah, wow. It's a horse now. Incredible. Well, that's, uh, that's great. <laughs> But uh, one thing that is, uh, oh, okay, here we're getting the lifetime scores. Oh, and that's interesting. That is very interesting. So Wesley has uh, actually a negative score against uh, Rajabov. And I do know at the Champions Chess Tour, Rajabov and the Tour Final was very convincing winner of their Tour Final match. Uh, very convincing. Very convincing. Magnus Carlsen uh, has a 3-2 score against Wang Hao. That's interesting. He lost two games. I think he lost one in the under-14 junior world yeah, championship. in 2003. The, the famous one that they all talk about, you know. It's a big one. Yeah. All three. With, uh, I think, was this the one that David Howell came third and Napomni actually won? I don't know. I don't I, know. I'm too old for this, <laughs> these kids saying, back in the days in 2003, <laughs> when you guys were still toddlers, we already fought it out in the under-14 World Championships. <clears throat> oh. yeah. I'm not sure if I told anybody, but Magnus and I, we're, this, we're born the same year, so we used to play in these World Junior Championships. And yeah, that was a big one, the 03 one. And then he lost another one in, when was it? 
I know. Later, some rook <laughs> endgame. He lost some famous draw oh, rook okay. endgame. So Wang Hao, he's well, he has a minus score, but two wins in classical. Two not wins, bad. Are not bad. But one of them is kitty chess, so does that count? It still counts. Yeah. yeah. From the opponent, the two wins. Oh and yeah, yeah. Chess always counted. Oh, okay. Well. Okay, well, we see some uh, interesting scores there, and uh, Wang Hao deep in thought. Also, I genuinely think that if someone beats you as a kid, you take it into adulthood, even if you become the stronger player on paper. Like, when I play someone who used to crush me in like under 12 tournaments, I'm still afraid of them, even if really? they're 2100 and I'm higher rated. I, oh, wow. I don't think it goes away. Oh. Simon and I have had, uh, Simon Williams that is, and I have had a rivalry that stretches back to when we were kids. I lost and to Simon when I was 14. I still think he's a good player, although there's plenty of yeah, evidence. Yeah, he's, yeah. Not, uh, <laughs> he's a great player. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, no, for me, it's like all those battles, they're just fun. They don't mm -hmm. count for anything. They were just us being kids. Maybe okay. because the standard was so low when we were kids, and maybe these kids, you know, were actually like playing GM level. I don't know, no, that's nothing to do with the level, but for me, if someone is, your, is beating you at an early age, you still have in the back of your head, oh, this is a great player, even though later on, maybe, oh, okay. the, the ratings change in your favor. I right? think I was groomed by my brother to always think of, like, kids, kids chess is just kids chess. Oh, Anything okay. goes. So maybe you have a healthier approach to chess in general. <laughs> yeah, but then you're the grandmaster. And I'm not. I only made it to international master. There's still so, time. There's, there's still, still time. time. Yeah, there's always time. Okay. And okay, so not much is happening between uh, Wang Hao and, and Hao Carlson. To move. He he's kind of almost really settling into the tank there. And well, what about another game? So what about uh, Anish Kiri? Hmm? They all look a bit dry, don't they? They do. Anish Palov. Yeah, the structure is stable. I'm a big fan. The power got this bishop. He went knight h5, and somewhat interestingly, Anish played e3. And I guess bishop e3 must be a move here as well, or I think I've even seen e4. But it, after bishop e3, you would allow some fun, right, by f5, and then maybe even f4 if you're feeling uh, particularly yeah. fresh. So yeah, so Anish obviously doesn't Anish want that first, not having any of it. first round and uh, it just goes e3, but yeah, knight pawn takes. But isn't this like maybe slightly better for, or, well, no, not slightly better, but a little bit more comfortable for black? Or is it just my bias? Uh, Anish, he, he studies his Catalans. He won't be going for something where he's slightly worse with white. Now this structure has always confused me. Like you can get for many openings where you accept these double pawns and you exchange the bishop for the knight or for another bishop. Computers are usually happy for white because I think they value the grip these pawns provide. But I was always a bit afraid, like in the back of my head, thinking, ah, one day these pawns will be weak or mm. they'll have the two bishops. What happens if this guy gets out? But I think white, objectively, white is slightly better. It's very hard for black to shake the central construction, hard to target this pawn. But white has both the option of going f5 one day or after g6, let's say, to start asking some questions here, then knight e5 at the right moment. So I've noticed computers are always very happy with these structures, but I've also usually avoided them if I had the chance. Mm -hmm. so, a lot of random errors. I drew, I have no idea what's going on. Um, I guess it does look very pretty though. should go with the queen somewhere. Yeah. It's under attack. Queen a4, queen a maybe? Oh, no, yeah, but then it kind of encourages a a6. Yeah, I'm um, not sure I want to. Yeah, don't don't thing. provoke a6 b5. He does though. Oh, he does do that. No, yeah, that was. Anish. I, I had uh, buyer's remorse after suggesting queen a4. I, I didn't. Goes for a walk. Very happy with himself after queen a4. That is the sign of a satisfied player. Yeah. I, I think it's a, a universal thing. You make a, what you think is a good move. You give a nod. Okay. Also, if you do it in the opening, it's a bit of a power move because he's saying, I know you're out of book. I know you will have to try to figure out this big riddle <laughs> that I just posed. And so I'll go for a walk if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a bit unpleasant if your opponent does it while he's sitting there sweating, trying to figure out what to do. But there's nothing worse than doing 
like like making a move, flouncing off, and then your opponent just instantly replies, and then you have to go yeah, back to the board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come here, play some chess. I know my theory. Okay. But usually they don't. Usually, at least, especially these top players have a great feeling for when their opponent is going to take, kind of take a moment, and when not. So what is the idea after Ace? I mean, what is it? Anish got up his sleeve. A six. That's what I would do. B5 is coming, knight B6. I could imagine that he will move got... the queen again, saying, I just want to provoke A6 because I'm so deep. You know, B5, you A4, get A4. Before knight B6 happened, but I'm not sure. And then you give a pawn. Yeah. Maybe their solution is more simplistic. No, takes, queen takes. We haven't achieved much, have we? No. And uh, no, but I, I like your idea of dropping the queen back to, and then b5, but then a4 is a problem, right? Yeah, I'm not sure how big a problem, but at least. I guess you go put queen some b6. Pressure, yeah. Queen b6. Queen b6. Or queen a5. Queen, yeah. queen, queen a5 is maybe a. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Just mm -hmm. I want to take with the queen anyway, but then bishop f1. Bishop f1, yeah. So it feels like black shouldn't be, shouldn't be in, in too much trouble here if he gets his pieces to breathe. Hard to believe it's so bad. A6 is on the board, so Anish had to return quite quickly from his walk. And deep thought mode. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Wow, he's so focused. Yeah, very concentrated uh, players. So, okay, so we we expect that the queen maybe will drop down to b3. I like this attempt. I think it does add hmm. some pressure and ask some questions to Topalov. Topalov, I'm not sure if he's still so rigid about it, but. In the old days, he was famous for just never leaving the board. He would just sit there for six hours. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure how he did it, how you maintain that level mm. of concentration, but Yang Topalov would just sit at the board, never getting up. It almost feels like cheating, because everybody gets up. If it's not your move, you walk yeah, yeah. around, you relax a little. Then you have this one guy who's just thinking about the position all the time. But uh, what are you? Are you a pacer? Or oh, are you no, I just walk around. You walk around. Stuff. Okay, uh, I, I also walk around. I, in fact, I, th I find I play my best chess when I'm walking around and just thinking. I, I have a, a lot of energy. I need to burn that off. Huh? And especially if I'm nervous, I find that walking just calms me down. For me, it's the opposite. I have no energy, so I get a headache if I sit there too long for thinking about the position. So ah, okay. Try, try to relax my walk. Yeah. But yeah, I'm oh, well. sure someone's smarter than... And then me has also put some thought into that maybe it helps you because you get, I don't know, your blood flow going or your breathing is a bit different when you walk. So I'm not even sure that scientifically it's the right thing to just sit there without giving your body any motion. For so long. I always wondered about like the visuals of it. Like, because when you're like so focused, you're kind of used to seeing the board from a near kind of sight. But when you're kind of walking, you're thinking of it in your mind and you come back to the board and you see it from afar. Surely there must be some advantage there or are you just simply using up your energy and... Uh... Uh, no, no, I think there's something to it that you get a bit more of a bird's eye view or whatever where you're walking yeah. around and you might some spot some bigger picture things. But there's probably also something to just staying focused on the yeah. position at all times. I don't know. Seems to have worked well for wrestling. And one thing I've noticed that uh, modern day players do is they pick up a pawn and they fidget with it. Ah, but that's just annoying. That's not mo modern day. That's just a strange habit of some guys, no? <laughs> it, and they say that like, it calms you down. There's like, some kind of like, sporting psychology reason for this. Ah, you know, it calms okay. you down. It's like a stress ball. Yeah, and uh, allows you to focus. Anish has a pawn there, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. But I, I thought the etiquette is actually never to do it in the eye line of your opponent. 
You've got to do it. That's right into Pau's Island. Look at it. It's <laughs> directly towards the pond. <laughs> yeah. No, so no. He's got to hide. Moved. Yeah, he's got to hide the pond. You get a. No, yeah, he's actually. Yeah, I hadn't realized that he was twiddling. Oh, well. How annoying. I remember once playing one of these in Indian kids, and he just completely destroyed me. But what was super annoying was that uh, he got up and he had so much energy <laughs> that he started running up and down. Annoyed already. <laughs> All I could see while I was trying to save this terrible position was a flash of red. And then a flash of red, I was like, oh, okay. I knew it was going to be game over. And it was. But uh, that wasn't just the reason. It was also because he played exceedingly well. Yeah, these uh, Indian kids are very, very strong these days. Shall we move on to... Told. Something uh, happened here. Wang Hao, after prolonged oh. thought, he did not go for our favorite, Yemu Bishop G4, but he allowed his bishop to be taken. Uh -huh. Six. Knight takes f5. E takes f5. Not a fan of that move. Queen d3, hitting the pawn. This is surprising. Like he gives up the two bishops. He also, it's a bit of this Anish structure with colors reversed, right? Right. But here, white has a lot more activity. Queen d3 targets the pawn, prepares pawn to c4. Not sure this is yeah, going Yeah, this, but also it's kind of my understanding in this type of uh, position that you should make white fight a little bit to get that light squared bishop. Yeah, get some concessions. Yeah. Goes g6. Curious if Magnus wants to go c4 directly. I mean, could you kind of argue it's very similar to, I was going to say, a Trump, a Trump situation where black just puts all the pawns on light squares, yeah, but sets up a fortress, and just goes, there you go, break me down. In the Trump, normally white gives up the two bishops, no? Here yeah. we have the two bishops even to boast. <clears throat> I don't know, I've seen similar-ish lines in the Slav where they do this. But I'm not a fan at all. I mm. like the bishops and here, c4, bishop g2, castles, knight c3. Not sure what Wang Hao is up to, it just looks nice for one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I like, uh, I like your plans. And uh, so let's revisit the game between Anand and, no, not Anand, uh, Mamadjarov uh, against Tari. We haven't uh, seen that one in a while. Oh. Mamadjarov, unsurprisingly, formed in a more dynamic way than just defending this pawn when rook f to b1. Saying you still cannot take. Will we be able to figure out why? Probably just leaves this knight. Is this possible? Yeah. Doesn't that looks really nice. Very dodgy for black, so Tari doesn't want any part of it. Goes b6, trying to develop this bishop without this pawn hanging. Rook to b5. Attacks the queen. What about? Can I take now? Um. Do you not have the same kind of problems? At Is least the knight can't get attacked directly. I thought. Queen. Okay, so if you ca capture the queen and then attack the knight, I know. You'd well, no, at yeah, least it you has a square now. Mm -hmm. What's your point, Mr. Mamadyarov? I, uh, I was, I was going to suggest something fancy, but it doesn't work. I guess... Queen d1 maybe? Is that fancy? Yeah, mm. queen d1. Not sure it does anything directly, but this queen doesn't have so many squares, no. Mm. Might be. Might be too clever. Queen drops. Where's my queen going? Queen has to go yeah, here. to a3. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't see a good follow-up. Queen. Queen escapes. Yeah. What else okay. is there? At the very least, you do have bishop takes. It's boring. No, no actually, hang on, this queen takes rook at the end of it. Yeah, this, yes, okay, can't do that. Yeah, I don't, th I don't mm. see anything direct. Like, white always has decent compensation, I would guess. But is there is there a trick? Okay, so let's try queen d1. Queen d1, queen a3. Mm -hmm. Knight c3 is the big plan. Okay, what about you get fancy because it's Mama Jaroff as well? Can you kind of... No, you can't. I was going to suggest rook takes pawn, but no, you can't do these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, knight c3 maybe isn't possible, isn't a threat because of rook b3. Mm -hmm. So now we've got that bit out of the way. Mm -hmm. um, I have a move to spare. So. I still don't see it, I could say. Rook c1. Maybe knight c3, rook b3 is nothing. But maybe you can go f3. So. Ah, directly. Uh, f yeah, f3 directly. And then because knight c3 isn't really a problem, there's a rook. B3. Mm, this line might continue. <laughs> Some uh. tricks. Yeah. Spots. The queen goes, <laughs> goes somewhere. We have this. Yeah. This little tactic. <coughs> I don't see it. Yeah. Ugh, should have gotten up earlier before school and some tactics. <laughs> I've never done that. Gotten up early before school and done ta tactics. Oh, Diaro has. No, I know. And that's why he's... That's why he's sitting in there and we're yeah. sitting here, switching on the computer, which is saying, yeah, why should take play A4 and have good compensation? Like, no, nothing direct. Oh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. Simple. Play positionally, but this is the problem with chess sometimes. Like when to give up the attack, uh, give up the pawn, and then just throw your pieces. And then other times you just go, yeah, fine, play it positionally. Yeah. Oh well, queen takes. It's on the board. It is on the board. <coughs> Here we go. Tari. Norwegian. I guess number two. Although Hammer said he's recently won a lot of ratings, so maybe you don't look at the camera. He's coming for Tari's spot. Yeah. Of course, an underdog by rating in this field, but he has quite a bit of super tournament experience now. Played last year's Norway chess, I think he played in. Or was it Vikingse? He played in Yeah, he played in Vikingse, and yeah. he also you know, played in the. Okay, it's not really a super tournament, but uh, it's still very strong, the Grand, Grand Swiss. And uh, without pause, Mama Jarov just captures off the queen. Looks like he anticipated. And uh, this pawn being taken. Plays the best line. Impressive. Okay, so maybe he can go knight a4. But maybe it doesn't quite make so much sense to put knight mm. on a4. Yeah, stops a4. Mm hmm. So, so, knight on the rim. Dim. I always use knight on the edge, by the way. But no one else seems to do that. It doesn't rhyme with dim. <laughs> no, but it rhymes with hedge. Mm. Falls off the hedge. Falls so. off the hedge. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, knight a4, knight c5, knight e4. Knight e4 kind of feels so much more natural, though, than knight a4. I mean, it, how is a f if you were to allow a4? How dangerous is that? I mean, is it just oh. white has compensation? The end? I don't think it's the end, but it's it looks like a constructive plan for white. No, I'm. 
find it hard to evaluate these positions, but with black I could picture getting in trouble quickly somehow. Right? Yeah. But uh, I was thinking of putting the bishop on a6, mm -hmm. just because I wanted to put it on c5, c4, c4 sorry. Yeah, it looks very reasonable. I really I struggle to understand. Looks better in white here, bishop c4. Go somewhere, b2. And, uh, uh. <coughs> I guess it's, uh, Oops. yeah, this is a little bit annoying. Yeah, black could put a rook here, take and yeah. rook eight. There would be happy days, but yes, uh, well, we can't have everything, but I imagine maybe pawn takes pawn and a6 and yeah. the game continues. Hanging oh, there, it doesn't yeah. look too bad, but I can picture this going wrong. Like, we'll trap the knight somehow. No, no, it can go back here. I don't know. You yeah. figured out, Arya. <laughs> you chose to play the strange line <laughs> to defend this end game. Fair enough, and uh, I sometimes feel about that, like that about my own games. I feel like handing over the reins to someone else. Let's uh, check That'd in on Wesley. Uh -huh. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Let's just go. Yeah, you, you know, you sort out my mess. <coughs> and uh, Wesley and uh, Rajabov. Okay. Oh, so we were correct. Queen B three. Queen B three. Great job, Anish. And. Uh, the center file just went b5 and uh, how about this one is black doing okay uh, i mean let's see how it continued out of the opening yeah good old italian move order poker here rajava is saying i do not believe that he will play bishop g5 mm -hmm. um, and wesley is saying you were right I don't want to push my luck any further. H6 now. This is very much in main line. Bishop to B5. The thing is, in these structures, if there was a pawn on A6, white would quite often take and then try to grab the space here with B4 and A4, which mm -hmm. obviously you can't do with the pawn on A5. So with the pawn on A5, these positions are considered to be fairly reasonable for black, because white without this space grab finds it difficult to do anything too lethal. Black could even gain more space here. And if white plays a4, the problem is he can never really play d4 because now he weakened this square. So long story short, after a5, usually white doesn't want to take take here. And the standard reaction to this bishop e6 has become bishop to b5, exploiting the fact that this square is available. Here there's all kinds of stuff. Ding used to like this plan with queen b8 and queen a7. Bishop a7, I've also seen. This, I think, is a recent thing. This knight to d7 going for either f5 or d5 here. It's very surprising, the stupid Italian, these symmetrical almost positions. How many nuances there are everywhere, no? And like mm -hmm. new plans and new trends developing. Yeah. Both of these guys, serious specialists get this structure which looks very innocent. I'm always a bit worried here with black. My timing is wrong that this knight will be the first to d5 or f5 or these double pawns could become an issue. But Rajabov probably knows what he's doing here. So complicated. It is very complicated. I mean, at first I thought this was just easy equality. Mm -hmm. But now I'm, I'm actually looking at the position, I'm thinking, it's not really clear what black is going to move. Um, mm. Yeah, that's also why I'm confused. It's not obvious what goes where. Like a typical idea would be to take here and go knight c5. But first of all, this pawn might be dropping. Secondly, knight d5 could be yeah. somewhat unpleasant. So I'm not sure what black is supposed to do. Take and 
Quincy Fife, maybe? Could be, but I'd still be a bit concerned. At 95. But I guess you have to be quite cold about it, an objective. So is there any kind of threat? So say you defend that pawn and you just go, yeah, yeah, well done. You got a knight onto d5. Aren't you amazing? Should be allowed to say <laughs> these things like play rook ac8. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, deeper. Aren't you amazing? <laughs> yeah. Happy, Wesley? <laughs> It does look nice for white, doesn't it? It does look great for white. Um, but then again, then again, I, I've learned, I've learned these days that I've been working through this, uh, this book, I think like a super grandmaster. Ooh, it's actually wow. written by uh, Mickey Adams and, and another player that kind of, I can't off the top of my head recall who it is. And uh, what I've noticed is that instinctively I get the first move right, but uh, Mickey and the other grandmasters Actually, I've seen way more than me. They've actually calculated maybe 10 moves deep, while Oof. I've collect, calculated maybe three moves deep. And come Mickey to the same conclusion. Mickey is such conclusion. a calculator. I thought he just makes this, he builds a spider web and traps you in it. Yeah, but he, he's actually calculating there. And, and there was one particular example where it was like, you've got to be objective about it. You can't just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. The knight comes to b4, and so you've got to pretend, you know, you've got to defend against it. No, 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 is an objective threat. And yeah, I was impressed. No, I mean, it's a really interesting book because it actually compares the thought processes uh, between 1500s, 1100s, uh, 2300s, my strength, and uh, all the way up to Mickey. No, go check it out. Mm. I haven't seen it. We used to have Think Like a Grandmaster, <coughs> which is this sort of classic by Kotov, <laughs> but it didn't really make sense, right? Because yeah. it was trying to teach you to think in this very organized manner, like in this position. I have the following candidate moves. Bishop takes e3, knight f6, pawn to a4, but would you say bishop it's to a, d6. It's a good way of training, so that maybe if you train on it so many, so many times, it becomes like part of the subconscious. I like don't know, generally, I think there are a few bad ways of training as long as you're thinking about mm -hmm. chess and how, how to do it. But it made it sound like it's not part of the subconscious, which it is, but that there's actually a logical approach to every position. That you calculate this move, then you calculate the next candidate move, then you calculate the next one, and then you're done. But that's not how it works. Like everyone's yeah. a flipper. You think about that move and you think, ah, no, but maybe in that line if I go here and you switch. Yeah. And I used to think, that's just because I can't think in an organized manner. But if you talk to any top player, like they all say, they're just, uh -huh. it's subconscious and everyone's jumping around. Because you also, while you're thinking about one move, you think of a different candidate move you didn't have earlier. Yeah. So it's not like you can always make a list. I will now diligently calculate these three moves and then choose. So that works. That's good. That's good to hear because uh, my brain is a, a mash of ideas with some music thrown in for laughter as well. Yeah, that's the other problem. <laughs> if you could think about chess for all the time you're playing a chess game, that's good. But yeah. It's always random song snippets <laughs> popping up. And like, yeah, so some stupid f like part on, you know. But I've always found that it, it's okay as long as you have a positive song. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. If you have that, that's okay. But uh, never have one of these like miserable songs. like. I'll tell you which song has been in my head for months now. I can't get rid of it. Ever since I watched the new Batman movie. Good movie, by the way. Yeah. But not very positive movie. Mm -hmm. It has a bit of a darker atmosphere. But this Nirvana song, something in the way. It won't, it won't go away. <clears throat> and I don't think it's very positive. Some of the lyrics don't make a lot of sense, but they keep playing in my head. Like it says, it's okay to eat fish because they don't have any feelings. <laughs> and it's, it's just on non-stop repeat. So you were playing in the Bundesliga just now. Did that song come into your brain? So is there. It's okay, it's okay to eat fish. Because it doesn't have any feelings. And, and you actually won. <laughs> and, uh, quite a few I'm, of your I'm games. I'm not sure it contributed. But yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Batman. That was uh, good. You had a good Bundesliga result. I, I saw that you had some uh, puzzle-worthy moments. 
yeah, yeah, I won a chess game. Like, that's, that's the true sign that you're washed up when in Bundesliga, where I'm losing rating, but I won one game. I'm like, whatever, 2640, and I won a game against a 2350 player. Mm -hmm. And everybody's saying, Jan, you won a chess game. You're back in business. <laughs> Congratulations. That's amazing. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. It's been, it's been rough. Chess is very hard, especially with something in the way stuck in your thoughts. That's tough. What do you think, Wesley and Rajabov? What music is in their head? Like we think of Wesley as this quiet religious boy, but I would think there's, there's probably all kinds of music tastes that we have no idea of. I could imagine Wesley being into like classic rock. Yeah, I can, I can imagine him being maybe into some Nirvana or something. Nirvana even? Yeah, yeah some okay. kind of... But, um, but I don't know, he seems like such a happy chap. Yeah, I picture him like more of, a, of an Eagles Hotel California type of guy. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't know. The thing is though, these groups do have their songs. I quite like um, the one who does Poison. Who does Poison? Is that what kind of... Alice Cooper? Yeah, that's the one. Ooh. No, I can't see Wesley listening to Alice Cooper. That's a great song, Poison. Nah, that's also too negative. We, we should find out. We'll, we'll interview Wesley, ask about yeah. songs stuck what in What music he likes. Maybe he's country. Good old fashioned country. Could also be, yeah. Yeah. But uh, it was quite interesting for the last uh, major Champions Tour event. The players actually could play listening to music. Oh, yeah. And uh, some of them had uh, classical music playlists like Chopin and things. I thought that was a good. I think if I were in that particular situation, I would probably play some kind of movie. Music, Hans Zimmer. Oh, yeah, some, yeah, you some know. Hans Zimmer soundtrack. Yeah, can't go wrong there. Um, I don't know. The classical, maybe it's nice for chess, but maybe they also just want to appear cultured because they know people could see the playlists. Uh -huh. That could be. Yeah, I was uh, reading chat here. It seems uh, some people like Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Ooh, also very depressing. And, uh, and, uh, so I should listen to Glenn Danzig. I've never heard of Glenn Danzig. Doesn't That's kind up. of gone over my head. Oh, meatloaf, someone suggests. Someone also suggests gospel. Gospel would be a good one to have actually in your, as your playlist. You know, have the whole choir behind you at the critical moment. And I can see you've changed position, so let's uh, see what's happened between Magnus and Wang. Yeah, no, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. It was Magnus has done. As expectedly, for the bishop on g2, castle played c4. Good stuff. I think he's better. Like the knight will come here, and c5 is potentially in the air. This just looks very unpleasant for black. I'm not sure why Wang Hao went for this deliberately. Play c6, he's still solid. He's doing this old. I have one bishop left, so I put my pawns on squares of the opposite color, so the bishop has a free view. I like your c5 plan though. I mean, obviously you have to time that one. You'll presumably want to follow it up with my favorite thing, which is like b4, b5. Yeah, maybe you don't even have to time it. But <clears throat> it's always a long-term danger here. Mm -hmm. Especially without the e-pawn, there's not this e5 counter. So black really has limited counterplay. I guess he would try to put a knight here. But no, I'd be very worried. Yeah. In house shoes. Yeah. Does he look worried? No. No. None of these top players never look worried. They never give the game away. It's true. Well, they always look worried. Also works. Are they? I don't know. They, they always look so relaxed to me. And Magnus always looks a bit sleepy in like the first two hours of the game. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's an actor? Maybe he just is a bit sleepy. Uh, Magnus being sleepy. Or looking sleepy. Yeah, looking sleepy, yeah. That's uh, much more accurate. Um, yeah. Um, thing is, though, 
He does that, and he plays amazing chess. So yeah, it who knows? Seem to affect his chess. Who knows? I mean, I've seen him play super ill as well. Still, way better than everyone else. So, no, he's just an incredible player. And, uh, but uh, it does look like Wang Hao is in trouble. I just had a look at the bar. The bar agrees with us. Very good. Mm -hmm. And um, shall we? What about? Oh, hang on. Let's go to. Uh, and let's go to Anish and Topalov because a set of rooks have left the board. Pawn takes pawn. I took on C8 first. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's trying to stop the queen coming to B6 or A5 or wherever. But now his bishop is covered, so Topalov could just take this pawn. Well, if he had done this directly, this wasn't possible. The queen had these. So takes, takes, takes. Doesn't look too dangerous, does it? Rook a4, maybe there's even this square. And queen a4, I guess the knight can come. How dangerous is that? Uh, because I'm kind of more drawn to rook a4, if I can get away with it. Yeah, I wasn't sure if this the was really yeah, a threat. Yeah, queen so. c1, and then bishop f1. Yeah. Eight. And mm. sop of queens. Try and swap the queens at least. Yep. I'm trying to impress you with my cow, well, not my, my chicken chess club. Although maybe I'm trying to, trying to actually win here. Because then I can queen takes queen. Or, yeah, and then step the king up to g2. Ooh. Yeah, I, I really want your pawn. Pawn. Yeah. In fact, you can even counterattack on the b2 pawn and then nothing yeah. happens. Yeah, so no problems for black, right? Okay, so is there any other move? So what about queen takes? Yeah, but queen takes. Knight b6. Don't put so much pressure. No, maybe, maybe the knight can come over here. Queen b3, knight c4. Mm. Looks like Toppy, using his old systems, just neutralized Anish's powerful serve. Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like we might be uh, looking at some Armageddon matches then today. Oof. Oof. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm. Seven. So White will have, if, it, if the main game is a draw, then we will see Armageddon match and I, I really like this format and uh, white will have 10 minutes on the clock black will have seven minutes and the one second increment which is not that much time gets added after move 40 and of course it's Armageddon so black receives draw odds and uh, I'm such a fan of Armageddon that I was thinking that we should you know we should just scrap blitz tie breaks we should just get mm. straight to the point go to an Armageddon match Ah, so you don't want the two warm-up yeah, blitz well, games. Why, why do we want that? It's just delaying things. Let's get to the thing. But then why, why have the classical game at all? Why don't they play five <laughs> Armageddon games per day? No, no, no. We've got to have the classic game. Not really. What? Hmm? Why has no one ever done just Armageddon tournament? We have all these... Yeah, actually, no one formats, hasn't done that. Champions Chess Tour. Armageddon edition? Wow, maybe we're onto something here. Sounds like great fun, no? Non-stop. Yeah. Five versus four games. White has to win. Yeah, white has to win. What's not to like? Do you get added time? I, I nah, do think... No increment. I want the, the flagging, the pieces <laughs> being thrown around. Oh, I, I kind of like the one second increment after move 40. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's nice. After that's move okay. 40, it's fine. Anish mm. made a move. He took with the queen. Keeping c1 covered. Okay. Like, hard to believe he's better here to knight b6. Knight b6. Okay, so. Mm. Okay. Knight b6 is forced, but it looks decent enough. It does look. It does look okay. 
Maybe there's some queen d. What about queen d1? Head all the way back and try to get control. Yep. Can I go knight c4 or is this pin going to be a problem? This might be a problem, right? I was hoping I could take, but I'm a bit scared. I still take. Mm -hmm. But I might regret it. Oh no. Yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. Oops. So, okay, but you don't need to. You don't need to kind of allow. Yeah, no, I don't think there's anything too dangerous happening. But if one gets a bunch of moves, yeah, at least you can and start asking some questions here. Well, the direct queen b3, then knight c4 seemed to work nicely. That's why you suggest the queen d1, because here they can take. Mm -hmm. So what should black do? Maybe just bring this bishop into action before it's too late. Okay. But okay, I mean, how, okay, bishop, bishop goes to f1. I'm trying to work out. Yeah, just swap it off. And now... Just let's leave that there for the time being. Sure. And I was thinking rook, rook c1. Yep, somewhere, I don't know, yep. Difficult, difficult to kind of go forward. Okay, I was thinking knight e5, but this. Yeah, black looks solid, doesn't he? Yeah. Doesn't he? I don't know if I need f6, it's weakening this pawn a bit, but even. Let's say rook c8. Rook c8, yeah, and uh, what to do? It's stable enough. Yeah, and uh, yeah, looks quite. Uh, just uh, having a look at the games and seeing if there's any excitement happening doesn't look like anything thrilling. Nah. It just, Magnus seems to be better. It's the usual story, some solid games, Magnus trying to mix it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so H6. let's, uh, let's visit, uh, revisit uh, Anand against MVL. These are two very exciting players. And uh, part of me really wants Anand to do fantastically well in this tournament too. Because uh, he almost won super bet in Poland. That would have been so cool if he'd won. So you're rooting against against our dear friend Maxim? No, saying. no, actually I'm not. I really like Maxim. Mm. It's hard I have to dislike, heart. isn't he? Like it's yeah, he's just it's a great tough. guy. He's just, just so friendly. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually Queen D1 uh, in the previous game, uh, Anish Giri and against Veselin was played. Boom. So what do we think about this type of position? Has white consolidated? Oh, sorry, the, yeah. the Vichy one? Yeah. Has white kind of got a stable white advantage? White has the ideal setup, more or less, no? With his knight returned to d4, but he managed to stop d5 and b5. I always thought white has to be better here. It's not like anything direct happenings happens, but in all this shuffling around, Black has a weakness here, has somewhat less space. I like White's chances. Yeah, but I was just thinking, it's okay, this is Black to play. That's, uh, I was getting a bit enthusiastic for White and trying to make two moves at once. That would be wrong. Um, what to do? What would, the breakouts are not possible. How can you pass? I uh, know, might somewhere. E5, C5. Okay. Knight E. I don't know, this feels a bit clumsy as knight, well. Really knight E, C5. Yeah. I just don't like Marozzi positions for black. I'm always so. And if black, sorry, if white just. There's no threat? No, the good thing with white is you don't really have to do anything until black 
starts initiating action with like f5, which is also very weakening for black. So you can make all these random moves like king h1, rook d2, rook d2, rook d1, rook d1, rook d1, queen f2, and wait for something to give. And all the while, it's going to be very difficult to get in a pawn break. I, f I feel like uh, Vichy is the one that's pushing here. I don't think it's that pleasant for black. I'm curious if this... Ah, uh, no, king h1, obviously. Not forced, but black should go f5, try to spice things up a little. Pause, of course, it weakens the king a bit, but get some squares. Usually with white you want to do something like this and then say, but look at all these weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It looks... Here I'm not too sure. Mm -hmm. No, it looks good to me. I, I like white's position. Yeah, it might still be good to be four. B4. So looming. Yeah. No, I, I really like uh, Vichy's position. It's not easy to come up with a move. So, okay. Maxine, staying hydrated, very important. Yeah. But yeah, let's do a quick tour. Then if there's still still no drama, we have to take a break. There's no other, there's no other way. <laughs> queen to e7, queen to e2, rook d8, rook d1, <laughs> pawn to e4. I like this move. I'm not sure if it was on my list of candidates, but why help the knight to get here? Might as well grab, grab a little space. Queen c2. Wesley saying, but your pawn. And did it, did it take one step forward or is it uh, being over defended? I don't know if it should go here or if this is giving up too much space, I can't say. What's the alternative? You could go here directly, maybe. I'm always afraid this pawn just gets taken. Yeah, that is Seems a concern. Um, the tactics don't seem to be. Yeah, okay, rook takes rook. To here. And then bishop takes pawn. Let's grab those forbidden fruits. Queen can. Uh, I guess it should keep contact with the bishop. We can. Mm. She can also attack the knight. Mm. But where? Yeah, there. Yeah. Why does it pawn up? No, bishop c five, queen c six. I was trying to calculate this where I'm sure. Yeah, I was Devious also thinking rook, about that. Rook grab is coming, but I didn't get very far. Looks like this works for black. Mm -hmm. White has moves like this, however. <coughs> I don't know, it but feels dodgy. But then you have bishop takes knight and... Ah, uh, oh, rook takes... Yes. Uh. Oh yeah, rook takes us as well, I thought. Yeah. Rook take with the bishop and hit the queen. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, so... Let me check this line. Knight b6 Knight. takes. Um, what do we do? Takes. I ah, know takes was wrong. The trick is that black should take immediately. Yeah. Makes sense. Rook takes. Here. This just works. Uh huh. Also not bishop a2. Ah, even bishop a2 directly. Yeah. Fine. yeah. Knight c6 and queen e8. Okay. So then knight b6 is possible, keeping the tension. Mm -hmm. The computer also says that... No, it does like knight b6 better. It says after a3, white well, should just go b3 maybe? I thought b4 looked more normal. But it kind of likes b3 for white as well. I'm trying to, I guess, keep all these squares. It's the trendy way of playing to push the a pawn, um, in this case, the A pawn, uh, or Harry, the H pawn, all the way to the third or the sixth row, and 
to say, hey, I've got an endgame advantage. And I was going to quote the Mandalorian, this is the way. Ooh. By the way, I did not like that TV, TV series. I haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched, well, I, I only saw it because I started watching Boba Fett. And it was really weird. It was okay. And then somewhere from nowhere, there's like a Mandalorian in it. And I was like, okay. Ah, what happened there? You say when you claimed you weren't a Trekkie, I didn't understand it as a statement. Um, that you're no, a I'm giant not a, Star Wars fan. No, I, I'm, not a, wanna, I'm not a giant Star Wars <laughs> you fan. You don't want to deal with I, the competition. No, 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 no. no. Um, one of my big complaints about Star Wars is that uh, the films take an incredibly long time. And the, the, the one where the Skywalker returns, I thought could have ended one hour before it did. I mm. was ready to leave my seat. And I was like, excellent, excellent finish. And then it carried on. Then they had another point where I thought, yes, yes, the film could finish here, and it carried on. I was like, oh, for goodness sake, I, I want to leave. I don't want to sit here for three hours. But uh, lots of people are very confused about this because they say, you're a chess player. You sit at the board for ages. Why can you not sit for three hours and watch a film? Yeah, that's, that argument always <laughs> annoys me because I don't have patience for a minute to do anything. <laughs> and they always say, but you, you can play chess and you sit there for five hours. doesn't mean I have patience. <laughs> for anything it's just something you do also time goes by very quickly when you're playing chess no you're thinking about your yeah, mood yeah. and you walk around like it's it's actually where time passes the fastest but to assume that chess players are patient people it's it's wrong we're just as as broken as anybody else <laughs> we should back to d6 yeah mm. yeah i don't have any strong star wars opinions i didn't i didn't watch it as a kid like most people I know, they adore Star Wars and the Star Wars universe because I think it brings them back these pleasant memories of this new world in the back in the whenever it was 1980s when we didn't have anything, and then all of a sudden there's Star Wars and this universe opens. So they are giant fans to this day. To me, I saw them later in life, <coughs> and yeah, yeah, it's it's all right. It's a bit slow. Some of the animations, yeah. Yeah. And also, if you see them later, you, you more or less know, I don't want to spoil it, but you more or less have an idea about the relationship between Luke and whoever, yeah, whoever the other guy is. So, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. now uh, there's all these new shows, like everyone's seen The Mandalorian, everyone's talking about Obi-Wan, and I have zero interest to revisit that world. No, I, sad. I also don't have any interest. But something that might be of interest is uh, we should check out Segway. Vichy. Segway incoming. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of uninteresting, <laughs> MBL has played B5. Yeah. I mean, what's that all about? Um, how does it how Okay, does how does this go? work? We take? Yes, of course. That is the way. Um, mm. Takes. What does he want? Takes. Yes. Take it all. Where's the trick, Maxime? Um, oh, hang on. No. Could there be before? Before? T um, oh no, it doesn't quite work. I was thinking that the queen could come out to g5 and do some. Oh, queen a7 was also. Yeah. So I was wondering whether you could throw this idea in at some point, but okay. But I guess the rook Seems just, to me. it's a bit of a, a leap, isn't it? Because the rook can go back and... Yeah, I guess we can still take no. Yeah. Oh, hang on a second, it's queenie, queenie three check. Oh, dropped a piece. good news so how does this work okay let's B5. go back b5 we cannot take here or we can but then we can't take on b5 yeah so so c takes b mm -hmm. a takes b looks wrong for many reasons one of them being, being this bad yeah bad very news. good 
very good for white, so it doesn't work. So you got to take here, yep. bishop takes. Now if a, b, white can take with the knight, I guess, so it mm -hmm. feels better to at least create some some loose pieces like this. Now we have this move. Targeting the rook. Of course, the, the solid way to play it would be this. But is it the best way? But then I guess you swap off queens and then... Oh, but still there's... Yeah, it's still a pawn for the taking. Mm. Yeah. This looks unpleasant. This, this no, looks very know. unpleasant. So, okay, mm. that doesn't quite work. So, what is his idea? What do you want, Maxime? Let's enlist some help. Oh, the help is also confused. Computer says, yeah, queen g5, queen d2, as we had, and what is better? Or A takes B. Here also says queen d2, actually. Uh huh, okay. Queen takes b5, which looks normal. Then knight e5, and it says there are, there are some tricks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knight takes f3 is a very. It's a queen d2. Okay, well, they have initiated the trades, so we are going to see it. Let's go. This Initiative is the first takes. bit of action, actually, that we've Finally. had. We've been waiting for this. That's the problem with chess, it's so slow. <laughs> I don't understand. Anyway, can sit through it for three hours. Do you have an expression? Uh, in English, we say it's like watching paint dry. Do you have... I've heard uh, of that expression. Uh, yeah. In Norway, you say watching trees grow. Watching trees grow? Yeah. Oh. I haven't heard that one. I think it's a. I think that's a. I think that's what the expression is. But uh, do I? Need, does German I don't have know any? If there's any German one. I think we might have stolen the English one. But watching paint dry, I think, is used in German as well. Okay. Other than that, um, I don't know. I think Germans are so efficient; they're never bored. They use their use their time <laughs> for productive <laughs> activities. You, you reminded me of the German joke. Have you heard of that one? Never heard any German jokes. Huh? Are there any out there? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a. Shall I, will you get a fan? Good. Nah, no. Nah, nah. I would say it's a couple that uh, adopted a German, a German child, and and he says nothing, and they are like, oh no, they take him to speech therapists, they take him to all the teachers in the world, but still he says nothing, until one day, suddenly. He says. This apple, I can't do the German, no, but maybe you can say this, this apple strudel is a little bit tepid. And everyone's like, Wolfgang, Wolfgang, wow. you're finally it's Wolfgang spoken. Wolfgang for, for extra punch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you've finally spoken. Uh, why didn't you speak before? And he goes, up until now, everything has been satisfactory. Fair enough. <laughs> now, nah, that's a sweeter punchline than I had imagined. <laughs> Yeah. Wolfgang. Wolfgang, yeah. It's, uh, I got it from QI. Mm. It's very good. Very good TV series. Okay, so we're actually seeing everything on the board. So come on, Bishi. Rook takes Bishop. There's going to be no pause. And now we get to see MVL's spectacular idea. Do you think he's just going to go pawn takes pawn? I think he wants think pawn takes pawn, and then he probably calculated this queen takes knight e5. Yeah, and he yeah. Saw some trickery. But it's risky. Yeah. Is she? Yes. He's he's excellent at playing a solid position, taking the pawns, calculating the lines. He might be smelling a chance here. So. So the Do you think this queen, queen d2, d2 was best? I'm not sure how obvious a move that is. I would start thinking about queen takes b5 for sure. Okay, so let's run through queen takes b5. How dangerous is it on a practical level? So knight e5 looks scary. Knight takes f3 is in the air. 
It does look a little scary, no? Like these pieces are loose. A bit uncoordinated for the moment. Queen A7 also exists. So let's say. Yeah. Back looks normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe still this? Yeah, and now you dash back, back with the queen there. to E2. And it's like we're running out of steam. What next? This is it. Can black do better here, maybe? Maybe check. Yep. King steps backwards. Sorry for out to the side. You dash in. This looks scary. Yeah, this looks really scary. Um, Knight is under attack and knight f3 is there. There's no obvious way to, to even cover it. Knight d3 also. Knight e2 is the only way that I can see, but knight. Yeah. Say takes. Knight takes. No, I can take here. No? Yep. Okay. So that was. Zero one for for black, so that no, didn't work. Probably not, not over, but it looked it looked looks, scary. It looks enough, bad. We, we don't want it. Mm -hmm. No, maybe you start thinking about queen b queen b five, but the lines are too risky. This is a nice little move. Just it's always once you've seen the computer move, it's so easy to say yeah, but it's obvious. It coordinates everything and takes the pawns and so on. Yeah. If she spots it. Maxime's going to be in trouble. But is there any kind of practical chance? So after queen d2, I guess, can you still just move the knight or something? Yeah, I was wondering about this, but here it looks like mm. white just covers everything. The knight also covers this square, which is nice. That's a bit unfortunate. I don't know if you can try something like this. No. Still grab. Go for some sort of break, e5, d5, or d5 directly. Mm. It's not that impressive, is it? Uh -huh. No. But no, it's white is better. No, white is coordinated enough as well. It takes Just take it and may put your king. Mm -hmm. I'm just uh, worried about the king being on an open diagonal, so I would move my king as quickly as possible to the corner and then play a4, push those pawns. And wow. What do you think Vichy will spot it? I would think so, because queen b5 looks a little risky, and queen d2. It's a nice stabilizing move. Also, Maxime is stretching there. Looks very comfortable. So he's signaling Vichy. Don't take the pawn. <laughs> it's poisoned. <laughs> Are you criticizing MVL's acting skills? <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> do you think he should be like, oh no, oh no. Oh no, my pawn. <laughs> my pawn. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Chess as a performance art. Yeah, very well, there, so. there's a very much an element of that, especially in the uh, when you're a junior, you gotta mm. amp it up. Yeah. Vichy doesn't seem overly rattled by any of Maxime's antics, though. It's just sitting there. Yeah. The only time I ever saw Vichy rattled was during um, the World Championship. When the press um, conference, if they ask him yeah, tough questions. Yeah, um, but it's also happy. when Magnus was like falling asleep at the board, I he had like his leg outstretched <laughs> on the side. It did look comforting. <laughs> I can see Vichy just looking at Magnus going, what <laughs> are you doing? It's especially annoying if he's also playing well while he's taking a yeah. nap with his legs. Yeah. Um, 
know about that. Must have been very stressful as well, you know? like especially the one in Chennai. He's playing in front of his home crowd. Everyone has a million questions, and there are these press conferences. And then there's this annoying kid who happens to be arguably the best player ever, like having his legs all over the place. Yeah, kind of been much fun for this year. Uh, no, obviously, he's one of the best players ever in I his own right, but he was a bit older at that point already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay, so Vichy here at a critical moment. He can play in a very risky fashion, grab the pawn, but it's actually much better to just simply play the solid and stable queen to d2 and ask black how we're going to defend the d6 pawn and the b5 pawn. That's the way to get an advantage. And in all the other games, it's just a relatively... It's a bunch level. of rock fights. Looks like they forgot they only have two hours for the whole game. They're taking taking all this time. Yeah. It's not like the positions are boring per se. It's just slowly developing. Mm -hmm. so the only way I can see out of it yeah. is to go for a break, play some great clips, give people the chance to buy all the chessable courses, especially mine. Do you have a chessable course out there? No, I don't. And then once, once Yovanka has a chess book course, buy that one as well. Go premium on chess 24. I'm sure we have a great voucher code that will appear on the screen any moment. And then, when you're broke, the good news is you can come back and watch us for free in a couple minutes. See you then.
Welcome back and uh, we are going to join in all the action of round one and for those viewers who've just joined us, I'm Jovanka Hauska and alongside me is the one and only GM Jan Gustafsson and I think we're going to dive in and revisit a game we haven't seen in a long time and that's uh, Magnus Carlsen against Wang Hao. The world champion with the white pieces is putting pressure against Wang Hao actually. Very awkward situation for the Chinese star here after pawn to a4. We've seen earlier in the opening that after knight to h4, Wang Hao just allowed this bishop to be captured with pawn to e6, which seems like a questionable decision. And he's been under some pressure ever since because it's hard to keep complete control. Here, a nice little maneuver from Carlsen goes bishop h6, stops castling. After bishop f8, he steps back, forcing black to also return with his bishop. So he won a tempo to get his bishop out. Now he goes a4, looking to stir up new trouble with a5 and a6. It's a tough spot for Wang Hao. If he stops this pawn, he weakens this square. So something like knight c3, castles, takes, takes. Pawn takes pawn. Takes, takes. And the knight can set up shop on b5. The difference between knights is quite pronounced. And this knight on b6, controlled by the David Howard pawn on b3, isn't doing anything. Well, this guy looks really powerful. Yeah, no. oh, I agree completely. And uh, also, just to add to Wang Hao's woes, because I'm feeling in that kind of mood, you know, if you take a look at the clock time, it doesn't have a particularly good time on the clock because the time control of this tournament is incredibly unusual the players will get one hour sorry two hours for all moves with the increment of 10 seconds only kicking in after move 40 so it's not great time management skills especially considering that there are only 13 moves have been played 
Yeah, <coughs> I like about this time control that we get a real time trial situation potentially at move 40 where they spend too much time. It's like in the old days when one player might have five seconds to make five moves, yeah. which nowadays most tournaments are played with 30 seconds increment per move. So you can never get a good old, ha good old fashioned hack fest. But here it's possible, especially if they keep playing as slowly. We might be compensated by a lot of action around the four hour mark when they have to make it to move 40. If Wang Hao even gets there, because his position really doesn't look like much fun. Allowing this A-pawn to advance is also not great news. Castles, A5. Knight has to go back, just Knight C3. It's very unpleasant positionally. Black has to give up his center. Yeah. And white will just put a lot of pressure here. And also, I just wanted to point out a maneuver that I've seen Magnus do time and time again is actually, as well, advance the pawn to a6 and then capture the pawn. So if you can, and uh, again, just claim that this pawn on a6 is going to be incredibly strong in the end game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rightly so. Yeah, I mean, we saw um, Rajabov try to claim that in his game against Wesley So, but maybe that one's, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely need to check that one out, but maybe this one isn't so good. Yeah, the computer was giving White a serious advantage somewhere around here, just going knight to c4, and it was quite happy about White's chances. It takes, takes the difference, and bishops would be very pronounced. The black bishop doesn't really have anything to attack, while the white bishop looks pretty comfortable on this diagonal. Uh, that looks great. Instead, but he's gone bishop to c4. Maybe didn't like, like just bishop to c7. Yeah, because of course the computer would be like, oh no, you can't give up a pawn, but uh, can you do it? The computer just saying 93. 93. Go after these squares. Looks, Looks great. very sensible. Yeah. Wesley decided to go bishop c4 directly. If this were captured once again, the knight could embark on his journey. But Compi is saying now rook c8 and it won't be so easy to activate mm. this guy. So maybe a bit of a missed chance there for Wesley. Not jumping, jumping instantly. I like how the computer just ca calmly suggests that rook move. I would be terrified about playing the rook a to c8 because I'd be like, well, you know, this pawn on a6, a3, sorry, a little bit weak. Have to keep an eye on it. Yeah. Because he's like, yeah, sure. They need to. I guess it's based on some trickery. Because I agree, queen b3 does look unpleasant. But yeah, for computers, it's just a different game. It just says, you know what, I'll go knight a7. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Mm. If you take, I'll take. And here, the knight, knight comes to b5. b5. And the end game. Now, all of a sudden, the pawn on c3 is weak. And we've stopped knight to c4. Yeah, suddenly it's like a turnaround. Black feels like it's better, even though that black has these terrible pawns. Knight b4, 55 coming in. Yeah, I agree. Not an obvious move to play. Rook a knight a7. Directly? No, no, has sorry, no, no, he hasn't done that. But I just, this idea that you came uh. up with knight a... No, I, I like your rook a c8 and knight b... Yeah, knight this a7. move is the... But knight a7, I mean, how, how human is this move? I think once you get here, you might find it by elimination. But to think of it in combination with rook c8, leaving this pawn alone, I could see being quite tricky. Mm. Java also taking his time here. Everyone is. Maybe they haven't fully adjusted to, to this time control. And they're playing it more like a classical game with 30 seconds per move. Yeah, but they're not getting any increments added until they hit that Magic number, move 40. Yeah, we're going to see some real time scrambles. A job of leaning back has been around forever in the chess world. Beat Kasparov as a 15-year-old. When was that? Probably 04, somewhere in the neighborhood. I don't know. Isn't he the same? Is he slightly older than Magnus? I have no idea. I guess he's, he's slightly older. He has to be. Yeah. 
And uh, I just wanted to head to the Mama Jara uh, Ariantari game because to me, I'm thinking that this game is going to be headed into Armageddon Ooh. very, very quickly. It doesn't look like there's too much into it, but... Looks better for white, but once again, computer saying black is just active enough to, to keep the balance. I go in rook a2. Knight jumps somewhere, Get the rook back. returns, threatening bishop h3. There's not too much that white can do. Because if you step up with the king, I'm yeah, guessing that looks that's logical. maybe but bishop h... Yeah, bishop h3. Bishop h3 and then rook mm, takes. Takes, but here white at least could potentially continue the game, I thought. But now computer says, nah, it's all fine for white knight c3. Yeah. Also gives knight to g5, threatening this check, so black has to take it. The black pawns are so pretty, but the activity seems to compensate, keeping it equal. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll see. The thing is, it's not that intuitive to me to remove the rook from this, from this first rank. And if you play the more kind of natural rook e1? Rook e1 he takes, but rook d1? Sorry, rook d1, yeah. sorry, yeah. To go here. Ah, he's played rook a2. These guys are good. It's been a long time since I've used coordinates. <laughs> yeah, ah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> How do you do it on the <laughs> champion's chess tour show? Do you just say rook to the middle? It's rook to the middle, knight to the edge. Oh, look at that. Line up the rooks together. You know, we use any word we can to avoid using coordinates. We can switch to that. No, 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 no. It's a very challenging uh, task, actually. It's, it's, it can Rook be very, one very step difficult. Back. Yeah, one step back. Targeting the horsey. <laughs> we haven't quite gone. I can't believe that that's a discussion in German circles. The horse. As I'm surprised to... it's not a discussion in English circles, because it does look like a horse. The one thing that I did see that's pretty confusing is this Why whole... Why is it a knight? Of... Yeah. Yeah, it makes, oh, I think it's, didn't the old chess sets have like knights, like figurines with a horse and a knight on top of them? No. no. Maybe. But one thing that's like super weird is uh, the rook. Yeah, why, I don't why even is it know what rook? rook means. But then we castle. Why do we castle? If rooks aren't allowed to be called castling, castles. No, rooks should be towers. They should be, right? It's a tower. The tower attacks the horse, but the horse could move to the left in an upward motion, counter-attacking against the tower. <laughs> After the tower goes one step to the left, then the horse could think about capturing the pawn in the middle at the same time, defending his own tower. And if the towers got traded... You're a natural, Jan. <laughs> White would have four foot soldiers versus three black foot soldiers, therefore giving him strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So the tower should probably just go back to where it came from. And then the question is, if the horse also returns, which could lead to this funny thing, which in chess we call threefold repetition, where both sides just do the same thing thrice, and then they shake hands. And you got in an old-fashioned word as well, thrice. That's a good word. <laughs> not once, twice, thrice. Mm. It's actually not a word that we use too often in the in the UK, but it's in in India. They use it all the time. Ah, okay. Yeah. I just know this musician, Obi Thrice. Mm. Okay. I'm not sure what he does, but yeah. I think Why I... would you use twice and not thrice? I don't know. It's just one of those things. Three times. Okay. It is, yeah. So let's count. They're at one. And Yarov will look for a way to keep the game going. Okay, so how, how does he keep the game going apart from... There's not many options, are there? Knight c2. 
Okay, two we've seen. Bishop h3 is a threat. Okay, maybe we can give a check. Check to, to the king. <laughs> Tower attacks the king, <laughs> although it's far away. They have <laughs> unlimited motions on the <laughs> files and the lines. So the king has to step away. Fortunately, he has a little hideaway. In chess terms, we call it Luft, which is the German word for air, believe it or not. And he could go there. Get some fresh air on h7 and it's unclear if white has achieved anything yeah so so uh the plan was just to drive the king away oh here no, we go we, here we go we have a result our first result of the tournament draw has been agreed they've repeated the position three times and that's it we are going to see our first armageddon and uh, the players will keep their original colors so Mama Jarov will start the game with the white pieces and 10 minutes on the clock and Ariantari will start with seven minutes and play with the black pieces and Arian will have draw odds. So the game. Good start for Tari. It Easy is a black great start. Against Mama Jarov. Yeah. I was criticizing his opening somewhat, but it looks like he knew what he was doing with all this all this bishop c3, queen c7, d5 business. He does his homework. Yeah, yeah. When do they start their, their Armageddon? So I don't know the details exactly, but uh, I've been told roughly 15 minutes. We'll keep an eye we'll on it. We'll keep an eye on it and we'll definitely follow that game, right? I think. I think we should. I mean, we'll, I don't think any of the action will be hitting uh, this, our screens with the other games. They're all going through a quiet phase, so we should definitely keep an eye on the this Armageddon. Why is it Armageddon? It's such a common term in chess. I'm sure you looked into the origins. What's what's Armageddon? I don't know. I think it's our chess players flair for the dramatic. Oh. You know, because it sounds cool. It does sound Armageddon, cool. the end of the world. End. Yeah. End Armageddon. <clears throat> I mainly, of course, think of the excellent movie with Bruce, Bruce Willis, Willis yeah. and Ben Affleck where they have this excellent idea. There's an asteroid that's about to hit the Earth. So what options do we have? We could train astronauts to drill a hole into that asteroid. But nah, that's way too complicated. So instead we'll find a bunch of drillers and train them how to fly to the asteroid. Yeah. It's, it's a great idea. And they have this, this very likable drilling team with Ben Affleck and Bruce Willis. I don't want to spoil it for you. If they, if they manage to save the Earth or not, if there are casualties, what happens to Liv Tyler? You have to find out by yourself. Yeah. Well, one thing though, I was listening to a science uh, documentary with Tyson oh, Negress. Look and at you. Yeah. And it's actually not quite correct that if an asteroid were hurtling towards the Earth, that they would just send up a rocket to explode it, because there would still be a lot of damage. So That's why they had to hurry. They have to explode it real far away. Yeah, well, what, what, they are good, what they do is, what they plan to do is they actually plan to send up a rocket mm -hmm. and have it um, fly on top just to cause a little bit of drag to slow it down. So that instead of there being a collision, there's a near miss with the Earth. Mm. That's the best scenario. So they're chickening out from destroying it, just... Yeah, yeah, because, you know, if you just explode an asteroid, then, of course, there's going to be particles flying okay. once, everywhere. Once you send Bruce Willis in, that asteroid is going down. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. At least they sent somebody. I've seen this other movie, Don't Look Up, where they didn't even send anybody. <laughs> that was a ridiculous movie. <laughs> Did you like it? No, like, I'm... Um... I'm sympathetic to the message, but I thought, okay, I got the message. It's not super subtle. We don't need yeah. to drag it out over over two two hours. Yeah. In general, I, I love this director. This is very interesting to all you chess spectators, Adam McKay. But I liked him when he was doing silly stuff. He's done some of my favorite movies, like Step Brothers, Anchorman, the other guys. But now he's trying to teach us something. Like he had this, the big short, Vice. Don't look up. And I just want Will Ferrell um, yeah. beating up the other guys and not 
Yeah. Not learning anything, frankly. So I'm, Adam McKay, let's get back to the old days, please. I was disappointed by Meryl Streep's performance, actually. I thought she was... Horrible actress. It was it's really well bad. I, I really liked Jennifer Lawrence's role, though. Mm. Sh shrieky woman. And I liked how everyone... Everyone was just uh, saying, oh, well, we don't like to listen to her because she's just, like, panicking. She's a bit aggressive. Let's uh, listen to Leo. Anyway, I'm ruining the, the mm. movie for anyone who hasn't seen it. Watch so, it. Yeah, it's interesting. Worth well, well worth a watch. And uh, yeah, let's. So where should we go back to? Magnus, what's going on? Wang Hao went A5. I guess he had to restrict that pawn, but it came at a price, as mentioned. Knight C3 castles, and yeah, this line is on the board. Bishop takes F6. Bishop takes F6. He will go C takes D. I'm not sure if black is in time to recapture with the knight or if that pawn would just fall. Mm, how does this go? Takes. Ah, he does take with the knight. And now let's figure it out. So white could take. Then queen b5, I guess, wins a pawn maybe, but simplifies the position somewhat as well. So it feels like there should be more for white. Could just play the structure. Take C, D, E3. Yeah. This is the uh, Magnus Carlsen Wang Hao position. And uh, Jan is simply recommending maybe the easiest thing to do is just play bishop takes knight and enjoy the positional advantages. Yeah, I'm not sure which piece to give. Could also keep the bishop. But this square so inviting mm -hmm. but it's going to be suffering for Wang Hao either way or something like this looks very very uncomfortable mm -hmm. mm. e3 rook c5 is looming and if white just gets this pawn it should be winning even with opposite colored bishops i don't think yeah can survive that definitely this is uh, quite a bad situation for Wang Hao I think I, I instinctively would capture with a knight. Yeah. Just to kind of say, yeah, you know, the light squared bishop is better than black's alternative. And uh, yeah, just very, very nice position for Magnus. And uh, what about, I was gonna ask about uh, Anish Giri and Parlov because again, that one looked to me like it was headed into Armageddon waters. I think that's a fairly safe bet at this point. Okay, so we might see two Armageddons at the same time. Oh, how, do, how does it work? Do they stagger them or they just go down at the same time? Well, they finished at different times, so they'll have to stagger them. They'll have to give the players the perfect, uh, the ideal time to pause, and then they will start. But I do wonder whether they'll have their own separate room because it might be a bit disconcerting for the other players if uh, those playing Armageddon are blitzing out the moves, don't, pressing don't bang the clock. The clock. <laughs> well, you can't help yourself when you have seconds left. You gotta, you gotta bang the clock. Sometimes yeah. you have to. I don't know. I would guess it's the same place. No, we also need the cameras. We need to see them. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So, looks like we're going to see two. Armageddon matches and uh, if this is the case the winner will get one and a half points whilst the loser just gets a one point so the points are split what's so the point system in general we haven't mentioned so you get three points for a win yep. in the classical zero points for a loss in the classical that's right that's not a lot and that's not a lot uh, it's better than minus points Armageddon win is one and a half points and a loss is one point mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so the time control in Armageddon, we're going to see white will have 10 minutes, black will only have seven minutes, and the one second increment gets added only after move 40. And this is the important point, black receives draw odds. So this means that if the game is a draw, it will be black who will be picking up the one and a half points. So exciting stuff. Yeah. So the rules are a bit different then 
with the normal counting system we would get one point for a win and half a point for a draw. Yeah. Because here for a draw, your expectation is a little less than half a point, no? If mm. I did the math correctly. Yeah. It's bad news for the for the chickens out there. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> bad news. And you still have to play some fighting chess as well. Uh, in the Armageddon match, you have to come up with your novelties and innovations. And uh, let's uh, have a, a peek at Vichy's game against uh, MVL, because when we left it, there was a choice for Vichy. Could he get greedy or should he uh, just consolidate his position? And it looks like he's gone for the latter choice. Yeah. Queen D2. He there hasn't given up on the pawn grabbing, but this is, was a nice move given by the computer, stabilizing. He's found it. Mm -hmm. And then how did uh, Maxim manage to drum up any counterplay? Not sure if he did. What are the people, the people saying? Are they happy with Vichy's performance? Everyone is happy with Vichy's performance. You know, everyone's super impressed by how he's doing. And Top pawn. I, I see a lot of speculations here about how uh, they they reckon that uh, Vichy is actually becoming, getting a second win, shall we say, because he's been training with the Indian youngsters. Ah, it's, so they taught him a few tricks. Yeah, yeah. They're very sharp. I was uh, super impressed by the young Pragnananda. And uh, of course, he's not the only one. There's D. Kukash and Nihal Sarun who are just awesome. So queen a7 on the board. Ah, so, but the theory is that the youngsters has ha have helped Vichy get sharp, not yeah. the other way around. Cause well, I'm sure if, if there is some kind of collaboration going. Vichy might going, do a few tricks as well. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's a, a two-way thing. But what an honor. And was, it, was Vichy competing in the, in the Olympiads? Olympiads? I don't think he was. I don't think he played the last one, no. Mm -hmm. And he's not, he's not going to be playing in Chennai. Mm -hmm. Maybe got, he'll be there. He's, uh, he's got his eye on becoming vice president. So uh, that's, uh, that's going to be an important job. Rook. Okay, so presumably the king will move to h1. Do you think the, queen, the king should move to h1? Do you think it's too much to ask the king to get to f1? Yeah, just to not cover, sure. it's nice just not to cover to worry about queen f2. Mates and queen f2. Thinking about it. Could very well be. What could Maxime do? He's down a pawn. Probably doesn't want to take here, because then. This passer does look pretty strong. Mm -hmm. So, Maxim in trouble. Maybe just uh, some rook to c8, but it looks very passive. Yeah, but maybe it has to be done. Sometimes ugly chess is the way. Mm -hmm. um, so Is it possible in this position to play rook takes knight? Does look like it. Takes rook takes rook check. Check. And that's too much material. So you can't go rook bc8. What about the other rook? Maybe just take go. this one, yeah. <laughs> just go. It is what it is. Please don't look. It's sad. I know. The thing is, though, I found myself on many occasions in bad positions. And sometimes you just... Got to keep the game going, <laughs> even if it's, if it's not fun. Let's see. Yeah, computer is fairly neutral. Likes both king h1 and king f1. But mm -hmm. yeah, now it's coming around on king, king, king f1. f1. And rook dc8, you were right on the money. Queen g5 or knight g3. And white keeps pressing, apparently, but it ain't over. Queen g5, very aggressive, giving this pawn back. And then knight to g3. Knight to g3? Ah, no, it wants. But okay, it wants to go. Qu 
queen h6 and knight e4. Ooh, aggressive stuff. Anand, after some consideration, put his king on h1. Also, also good. Very natural. And now this rook dc8, now he could really switch to a direct attack. Yeah, you can see. Compi is already saying this is winning. It's such a different game with computers. Just gives this pawn, doesn't care. Checkmate. But objectively, Maxime, in a world of hurt. Good. But how realistic is it to give up a material like that? I think he can do it. It's, he's a pawn up and it does look like it's a nice position for white. The question is if there are any... Oops, apologies. Mm -hmm. Oh dear. <coughs> Sorry. Gesundheit. <laughs> thank you, thank you. There are any greedier options also keeping the advantage, like queen g5. But I guess it always comes down to returning one of the pawns and then going for an attack, according to Mr. Compi. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can even see ideas of like knight h. I like your knight e4. That looks great. But also knight h5. Possible. Drama on the board, so it's looking great for Vichy. Um, Seem in deep thought. But he got himself into some trouble with this, maybe already in the opening, but then certainly with trying to break free with his b5 move. Which came down eventually to losing a pawn and Vichy found a way to take it in the most controlled fashion here with queen d2. And ever since, it's been suffering. Yeah, it's in full control. But I have to say this b5 uh, move, it's, I think it's very, very human, especially when you calculate that capturing the pawn immediately yeah. is gonna give you some uh, compensation, some activity. So it's tempting to kind of work out the forcing lines and not perhaps do an evaluation at the end of this line. Yeah, I guess he underestimated this queen d2 move, mm. which is very understandable. But, but here we are. It is. Uh, okay, and what about Wesley So against uh, Timor? He did not play the computer move that we talked about, this rook ac8 leaving the pawn unprotected instead maybe more human rook dc8 rook dc8 so this guy could keep an eye on this pawn but wesley is saying but now your bishop is in a bit of trouble here maybe with the rook no longer guarding it goes queen d3 knight d8 knight mm. <clears throat> d8 follow up i guess he doesn't want to take this knight could spring into action. That does look unpleasant for like a move like this. Knight that looks four. good. Nice e4. <gasps> if takes, can we take with the queen or are these pawns just dropping? Takes here, mm. here. I was hoping that'd be some sort of trick, but I don't really see it. No. And that one, I mean, there's nothing wrong with capturing with... I know, oh, I don't see this. Okay, okay, this, we should continue. Knight takes b6. B8. It's shaky for black. Knight takes pawn. Um, oh, hang on a second. There's rook c5. Still hanging around. Yeah. But this position looks very dodgy. No idea how we got here, but it doesn't look good. No. So, okay, this was bishop to d5 uh, yeah. in the starting position. Far from forced, also. Maybe doesn't threaten that much, but. No, but I mean. Like to go knight maybe after bishop takes bishop as well, you can just go pawn takes. Yeah. And just go, hey, your knight stuck. And uh, yeah, 
black would need like g6, f5, knight f7. But in the meantime, you know, you, you can just uh, switch your attention to the e pawn. Knight c4. I'm curious if g4 is a good move. You're just trying to stop f5. I Let's didn't think about this. that one. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't know if it's any good. But, uh. Black Knight is so silly. Maybe it is good. Yeah. And, okay, so uh, definitely Wesley having the advantage here, but uh, let's revisit Magnus against Wang Hao because it seems like his uh, advantage, according to chat, has uh, disappeared somewhat. Oh, what has he done? I don't know. So he took, knight takes, pawn to e3. Why not rook c1 first? Threatening this. Anyway, he played e3, queen d7, queen b5, d8. Now the rook comes, bishop e7, stopping rook c5, rook c2. Still looks more pleasant, but with the bishop coming here and d5 not falling directly, it does look like he hasn't achieved the max. We see the Armageddon is about to start, Ooh. but the game is not on my little feet here yet. Do I need to do anything? Uh -huh. And uh, the players are off. We can, have we got it? Looking. Uh -huh. There. Ah, here At we the are. Bottom. Now there's the names. All right. Okay. Okay, so let's, let's watch the Armageddon then see if Magnus has managed to put pressure. I'll but yeah, a bit surprising, no? Because uh, he had such a big positional advantage, the world champion. Mm -hmm. And it's like maybe it was a little sloppy. Like yeah. Wang Hao. And in, there. and in other news, we also have a result um, in the game between Anish Giri and Veselin Topalov. Let me, let me guess how it ended. Go on then, Jan, surprise me. Uh, draw. Ooh, that was a bit lucky. Oof. Got it in one. That was like 33% <laughs> chance. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, see what's happening. DC4, wrong. I am in trouble. Now they have managed to, to confuse him with the move order. DC4. Maybe it's prep, but it does look very shaky. Usually why it's just better in these positions, although it doesn't look like much, because this bishop is so much more passive than this guy. Mm -hmm. So just castles, rook d1. And it tends to get unpleasant, because the black queen doesn't have the square would like to would like to go. Stand off in b4, embarrasses his bishop. So I'm surprised by, by this choice, dc bishop d7, and yeah, rook to d1. Uh, the of being precise doesn't allow queen e7 because now the pawn would come and the bishop. The bishop returns to e7. All the way back, very passive. Yeah. Maybe there's some hope for the queen on the fifth row. It's an ask, but the possibility is always there. And uh, meanwhile, the player is playing very quickly. And uh, while well, Arian doesn't actually have too much time on the clock, he's just over five and just under six minutes. So. Bishop a2 by Mordiorovin. I guess typical aggressive style, maybe he wants to put the bishop here and then use it to give checkmate. Felt a bit slow. Well, now you can, you can do the grand plan. You can go bishop can. to b1. Mm -hmm. yeah, I guess he wants, I don't know what he wants, g6. Yeah, and then you can go bishop d6 and just... Okay, bishop b1 on the board. Threatening checkmate. Well, it's not very subtle. <laughs> He's gonna spot that. Yeah, he's seen it. Oh, darn. G6. Okay. Now yeah, I guess. I'm predicting the bishop trade, or maybe bishop h6 yeah, as a consequence. Here, yeah, it looks more aggressive. Because the bishop trade, at least the white, the black queen maybe gets a square e7, on yeah. 
that's also the usual question. If allowing the exchange of this bishop or new favorite structure it helps white here, but it feels feels unnecessary. He goes bishop h6. I did wonder whether he would go knight to g7. And okay, rook e8, all good. The bishop on d7 looks slightly weak. Is there any way to do something about that? No. It is what it is. And white moves forward with the queen in a diagonal fashion, attacking this bishop, intending if the rook were to defend it, to ask more questions. So this means you have to go knight f6. Knight f6 plate. Is, uh, to me, knight to the middle to try to exchange that looks natural. Yeah, and what about e But now the arrow goes bishop g5. Feels like he's drifting a little bit, but actually no. Computer still likes what he's doing. Just threatening to take and to take. Very brutal. And uh, the queen, if she does capture on d7, is potentially trapped. So I'm just trying to think of ways that black can use this motif. I was thinking queen b6. Yeah, let's look at this. Takes, takes, takes here. This queen ends up being caught. So you can't do that. If we throw in bishop takes, does that change anything? He's already done something else. He's played e4, e4, so he acknowledges can win material. Threatening e5 by rook e d8, and somehow Tari manages to coordinate his pieces somewhat. Still e5. Now, the RF also has a pawn to play with. Or was that a queen? Mm -hmm. And. It's a tricky position for Ariane and not so much time. But I just think uh, the queen is probably going to relocate herself. Preferably to the king side. <coughs> okay, e5. e5 played, bishop e8. Yeah, German. but now this, the queen can maybe step to, I'm thinking c4. Or, or I'm trying to get the queen to h, h4. Yeah, I guess if queen here there were some tactics with yeah. the rook. I was prepared to sacrifice everything just ah. to get the queen there. Queen not, e2 instead. Not Mamadiarov. He moves back. Which is a nice, uh, nice move. But okay, taking into account the clock situation, Ariane has uh, four minutes left, and he won't be getting any added time until the players reach move forty-one. This just move twenty. Mm -hmm. mm. Knight to d5. White has a choice if he wants to keep this knight for the attack or if he wants to take. Take it. Just take. Take it. e6 is coming, right? Rook takes. Probably rook takes again. And then it's a big question if white has the pawn break there after the rook takes. He can push. Very focused. Yeah. Ooh, very tense. Oof. Very tense situation. It's very tempting just to capture and then just push the pawn. Push the pawn. Soften up the king side. Or maybe you can go for more and try to get the dark squares, like step the queen, yeah, queen to d2 queen to or something. D2, yeah, and then something, huh? bishop f6. Go for checkmate. So tense. It is. They can't even speak to each other. Not. Are you nervous as well? <laughs> I see you only have four minutes. <laughs> okay, he he trades off dark square bishops. And then Here he's going for a plan. So queen h6, knight g5. It's in the air. I mean, how is uh, Ariane going to defend against that? That's not easy. No. Easy task to do. Worst case scenario after queen h6, he has knight f5, but it's not very pleasant. 
and then Wolf to play. Bishop takes. Uh, yeah. I mean, you also have a king h8, and I guess you can chase out a queen on h6 Ooh. by playing knight g8, but this is like... Bleh. Also sad, yeah. What else is there? Just king g7, maybe? Okay, uh. Yeah, king g7. Okay, this is the Kramnik rule. Yep, gotta do it. And uh, I'm guessing queen to g5? Yeah, then f6, I wasn't sure. Anything gives. Hmm. Well, Ariana may be surviving, and uh, that's why we see Shakria just uh, change tack a little bit and then introduce his rook to the game. So now e6 could be an idea to think about. Yeah, it's one of the better attackers in the business. The Azeri following the old rule. Invite everyone to the party. Brings the rook that mm -hmm. wasn't doing anything yet. Yeah. And I can see a question in chat. Who's, uh, they're asking, who picked the Armageddon colors? No, the players don't pick. Um, the, sim the players play with the same colors that they played with in the classical game. So this Seems is fair enough. I White think so. it makes a, makes a draw in the classical, then he has to win in the Armageddon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really like how Shaq is playing, you know, nothing is committal, everything is just simply making improving moves and all the while the clock is ticking down for Ariane. Now just over two and a half minutes and uh, they're on move 26. So 14 moves left to that uh, one second increment. Yeah, which really is that one second is really not that much time either if you have to press the clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, h5 coming, it's not easy. I mean, I think probably it's queen e6. Trying to stabilize, but still unpleasant. Queen f4, knight d4. Knight d4 looks good. Um, another move I was thinking is maybe queen, yeah, queen to g4 would be the response there, but mm. still. Yeah, how great that is. <coughs> now you are taking his time here. He's calculating knight to d4. But it's also very tempting to go h5. Knight yeah. takes, so goes g5 most likely. Yeah, and then knight, and then okay, the knight on comes the board. Here. here he goes. And then knight d4 is the idea I wanted. Ari under pressure. It's also nice about h5 that now black has to take a decision. It's not obvious. You should go g5 or take it or ignore it. And he goes with door number three, goes rook c4. Try to at least stake a bit of a claim on this fourth rank. But it does look shaky. Mm. Hg. That's a natural move. And uh, he plays it. Stabilize bishop d3. Sooner or later, the black pieces will be forced to retreat. Yep, here um, comes the knight. Queen g4, what's this point? g4 played. Mm. F4? F4 looks good. Oh no, feels, feels unnecessarily complicated somehow. But somehow you don't kind of, maybe, maybe a move like, yeah, it's not so easy actually. Mm -hmm. I'm drawn to f4 and uh, well now Shakriya has two and a half minutes on the clock. So he too is taking his time. And uh, you have to remember the players don't get any added time until they reach move 41. And then they get the very big bonus of one second increment. Yeah, he's played rook d1, just covering the knight on d4 without without weakening his king by touching the f form. He's dreaming of just pu pushing this rook out of there with b3. 
So Tari has to act quickly, and he does win knight c6. Adia re retreats to f3, bishop f7, covering the pawn on d5, but white could still go after it with bishop a2. Yeah, that looks good. I uh, think bishop a2 is a killer move. Um, anything like rook better. f4. Better b3, also tempting. No, he's played bishop a2. Because uh, rook f4 was something I was thinking about, but it doesn't really work. So yeah. it has the rook stays here, it gets stuck. So rook f4 played. But now you can just take on d4, it's on the board. It's and uh, Oh, is there a fancy move? Knight to d4 played, looking for confusion. Bishop f7, knight f3 is no good. I mm. guess he can mm. just take. Norwegian commentators yeah, they, they, sound very they, they, excited. They are very excited about this 94, development. 94, 94. I can't 94, believe it. 94, bishop takes. He's lost. Yeah. Kirby enthusiasm. <laughs> Queen. Well, it's a nice shot, let's say. Let's put it that way. But uh, Arya now under a minute. He needs to play as quickly as possible. Um, just move the queen back anywhere. But it's not so easy, is it? Queen g5, there's 92. And all the pieces are under attack all of a sudden. Uh, Queen g3, there's also 92. I think there's just material dropping. Queen g5, Queen played. g5. 92, I don't see the problem. Yep, yep. here it comes. I'm just attacking the rook and the bishop. And um, what about bishop takes pawn? Bishop knight, takes pawn. Knight takes, and then there's a fork on. E, yeah. Six. Oh dear. It's game over for the young Norwegian. Handshake. And that's it. Mamajorov has won the Armageddon game. And, mm. uh, well, what, what can I say? Shaq played a great game, actually. Yeah, he got a bit of an initiative and never let go. And uh, the players analyzing there. But uh, it does seem like it was uh, somewhat of a slightly bad opening for Aryan Tari. Yeah, still not a horrible day for Aryan. Got a relatively easy draw on the classical with black. But of course, once you make it to the Armageddon, you want to win it as well. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> That's quite exciting. <laughs> I love Armageddon matches. What do you think? Yeah, it should just be Armageddon. <laughs> I'm what? on board this classical, okay. Yeah. Normally it's a draw, sometimes Magnus wins. Who needs to see this? Just have them play armor again. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Oh well. Queen d7, is Magnus even gonna win? It does look like Van Hau. Stabilized indeed. Carlson catching up on the clock now as well. Mm -hmm. Probably can't believe that he didn't break through yet. Yeah, uh, looking at the clock times, uh, well, Wang Hao still under. Now he's only got half an hour left. I just want to try to figure out the difference because it feels like somewhere around here Magnus was a little sloppy. Mm -hmm. He started with e3, which is very natural, but it gave Wang Hao time to get both this queen d7 and bishop e7 in. Well, if he starts with this, it looks like black is not managing. Because now if queen d7, there's rook c5, and the yep. pawn just falls. And if bishop e7 now this is no longer under attack so you can go queen b5 you know, queen b5 as well so i think he just yeah switched switched up the move order a little bit here because now for example you can play e3 cover the pawn and once again black is not in time mm -hmm. to keep everything under control so a bit sloppy here the world champion and now it got much, much harder to break through. Oh, they repeated moves once already. Oh, they, won't, they won't repeat. No, Magnus will. will Magnus will playing. play. That's what he does. After all, you know, he still has everything to play for. He has control of the open line. I mean, how easy is it if the queens were to be exchanged off? No, it's still well, suffering, but this bishop is a nice little... 
little anchor covering the c5 square and keeping the queen side protected so i'm not sure how white breaks breaks through that let's say here And then the bishop will come to, to f, f1. Mm. <clears throat> mm. <coughs> not sure if bishop f4 was very wise, but yeah, now where this pawn is not under attack. Yes, this time. No, white is still better, but far from the almost winning advantage he seemed to have around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Really, I wonder what he missed because this looks pretty straightforward. Maybe black can play b6, but it's also not a pretty move to make. Oh, but then the rook just comes to c6 and double queen b5. Full control. I think. Yeah, I think maybe he just thought the position would win itself and didn't yeah. make a difference what move he played. But it turns out timing is everything. Fisher was right. And uh, what about Vichy? Because last time we looked, he was in full control. And uh, Ooh. it looks, looks good. Doing looks his best to, to mix it. Queen f2 played, rook c1. And then I'm guessing, with, is this where we see rook takes rook? Yeah, forcing the exchange. And now the e-pawn becomes a pass d-pawn. H3. And uh, in the meantime, the Armageddon game between Anish Giri and Topolov has kicked off. All right, let's Shall watch we, that one. Let's watch that one because uh, well, the play More gets Catalan. Gets Never faster. change drawing and opening. Curious. They repeat the same line. They debate it. In the classical, Queen C2, C6, who's the first to deviate? Should have four, knight h5 was the game, and then e3. Okay. But Topolov switches it up. He plays ah, no, the main no, line. That, no, no, that was the game. b6, knight b2, sorry. No, knight h5. Mm -hmm. Anish still convinced oh. that what he did was right. They're just repeating that game. Or maybe Anish will. We'll just make another draw here with white. <laughs> <laughs> he can't. Just stick to it. <laughs> he mm. can't. He can't repeat because otherwise he loses the, the game. He can and still do it, but that was a deviation. C takes D. E and takes, e takes D. D5. Now the structure changes. H4. This has become a thing. Like I think they call it the Christmas tree setup. Put the bishop here, mm -hmm. and then you build, build this V. Okay. Computers really, really enjoy the Christmas tree. And uh, well, black playing very sensibly, rook c8, preparing c5. And well, Anish not using too much time on the clock. I'd be one. Very sophisticated. Deep stuff. Yeah, uh, get the knight, knight to the c3 square. Needs to be here. I only just realized, should have put it there directly. He could have done if he was feeling a little bit fruity. Okay, so now we see a trade, pawn takes. Forced. C5 breakout. Love it. Rook. C3. And knight to F6. Okay. Just maneuvering. Yeah. You know, I guess black simply has to maintain all the tension. One thing I would be tempted to do is uh, if rook d1 were to come, I would actually close the position down. You want to go C4? C4, mm. yeah. I'm not sure, yeah. Either that, or I'd go, either that or I would try to go Rook C7 and Queen A8. <laughs> That's <laughs> too, the too sophisticated. Mm. Yeah. I like A6 because it's potentially preparing yeah. these pushes. I'm curious even if Anish will go A4 just to stop B5. And good. And uh, just a reminder of the time control. So the player started off with Anish Giri having 10 minutes. 
whilst Vitalin Topalov has seven minutes on the clock. The plays do not get any increment until move 41, upon which they will get one second added bonus. Until then, it will be fast, furious, and uh, absolutely adrenaline-packed stuff. Oof. That's it. It's our favorite type of chess. Mm. My favorite type of chess. I shouldn't speak for you. No, I'm a big fan too. Anish, the Fast and the Furious, Giri. Thinking about it, what's gonna be? Gonna be? I'd go a4, but he doesn't seem to want to play it. Rookie one is an unnatural move. DC5, if he feels like forcing it, what would you do? I would be tempted to play DC5, just because I don't know what to do. And one of my chess weaknesses is when I don't know what to do, I just trade off pieces. Oh, can't okay. can't maintain the tension, as uh, one of the former England team captains tell me. Yeah, there's a skill to be able to do to do nothing. Mm. But I haven't read Mickey Adams' book, but I would imagine he's amazing at yeah, he, keeping uh, the tension. Yeah, probably nothing. making a move like rookie can teach one. Us. Yeah, and I don't know if we want to allow b5. That's why I thought a4 maybe. Ah, but then after b5, we okay. Well, See, it looks Anish like Anish also <laughs> doesn't maintain can't wait the around. tension. Oh dear. Okay, rook DC takes. See, rook takes. Interesting. I'm a little bit worried for the players when they start making my suggestions. Oh. <laughs> I have an uncanny ability to get their blunders. That looked like a good move, especially if rook takes is the answer. Yeah, I'm yeah. more concerned about bc. Me too. Okay, now comes rookie one. Centralizing, Giri, doing well. Definitely doing well. And uh, he's got ideas of going, I guess, knight to d4, knight to f5. Yeah, looks on paper like black should be okay with the two bishops and the passed pawn and the white double pawns. But this bishop is very passive. Once his knight starts getting jumpy, the white king is safer. It's an underrated effect of these mm -hmm. four pawns. They protect the king quite well. And uh, queen b3 on the board, pressure on the weak d5 pawn, also b6, given what else? Doesn't look great for Topalov, at least in a practical game. Seems so much easier to, to go mm -hmm. wrong with black. Well, white has all, all kinds of natural moves or half threats. And what else to do? I mean, trying to think of them. It's difficult to suggest a move. I think I probably would just play b5 if I went to pile of shoes and just find a square for the queen. Whether that's a good move? Probably not. No, it's very logical. I'm a bit concerned about this a4, but maybe it's not, it's not mm. the end of the world. But there's a knight a4 at the end of things. Oh, did I blame that? Oh, yeah, sorry. So <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> I led you into a trap. Okay, well. Topolov goes h6. Yeah, but now knight d4. Problem with h6 is now it's really hard to play mm. g6 because you weaken that square, so you will always get loosened there. Knight d4 plate. Still, is that a big threat? Can Blake just play here? I don't know. Bishop f8. I guess so. I mean, I don't really see a constructive plan for black. And uh, the clock is ticking down, so... Yeah. Veselin Topalov, not known as a blitz specialist, of course. Has had good results. Can't beat anybody in the game. But it's not supposed to be his main, his main strength. Mm -hmm. One of the things I noticed about uh, Topalov's games, especially the recent ones, is that he's great at closed positions. And uh, when it comes to open positions, not quite as good. Well, obviously, still amazing, but that's interesting because people think of him as a as an aggressive player. Yeah, yeah, but you can be aggressive like in a closed. Oh, that's true. And Bishop F8. 
There are a few ideas that I saw that he had, and I was like, right, I'm uh, putting that in my database. Rook takes rook. And uh, Anish playing with the pieces before he made the move. And uh, what do you think about this recapture, knight takes? I think he had to, because after queen takes, the pawn on yeah. b6 was dropping. But he probably won't be thrilled. And I don't know, Anish will think about getting jumpy. Right? Either this or more I chicken chess club style, try to grab a pawn. Yeah, grabbing a pawn looks good. I also really like your knight f5, knight e3 maneuver. It, uh, what does the computer say? The computer says both those moves. Excellent. Boom. Which one is it, Anish? No, knight, knight c2? c2. Come on. Also go very forward. good. Uh, does go for the same square. Knight e3. But if you can choose one route to e3. Ah, but this one's protected. This is one thing I learned in blitz games. You should protect your pieces. Knight e3 on the board. Incredible yeah. amount of pressure All the pieces on the are d5. Covered. I learned from, who was it? I think John Nunn's book, LPDO. Mm -hmm. Loose pieces drop off. So, this bishop is loose. Yeah. She takes the pawn after having brought all his pieces to attack it. There were not enough defenders. So now, how do you recapture? With a knight. Oh, instead of the bishop. He takes with the bishop. He's worried about the opposite color bishops after the knight takes. Bishop takes. And queen c7. Hmm. But, uh, Why is, of course, better, but still some work, no? Yeah, especially if the, the black queen gets to f3. Yeah, you can stop that. Hmm. So, he has to play knight d5, and it's on the board. Hmm. Queen c6. So far, so good, but sometimes Anish, is, Anish has struggled to, to finish off games like this, mm -hmm. particularly in 10 splits games. Not sure this one qualifies. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, pressure on Anish. He has to win this position. Nothing else is good enough because it's an Armageddon game. No choice. Um. Right, move 28, but yeah, neither side has been very, very slow. So Tupalov should make it to move 40. Yep, so I'm just thinking of ways how Anish can improve his position just without any risk. Is it a good idea to kind of put your king in the corner, in the dark square, h2? Oh no, that weakens f2, so then mm. there's rook to c2. Yeah, yeah. Not sure what order I would like queen f3, king g2 h5, maybe start pushing these pawns, so h5 or f5, and g4 at the right moment. But Anish, he can't decide. Maybe maybe it's kind of a good idea to hold the second row, just kind of go rook d2 with your idea of king g2, queen f3, but not allow rook c2. Very solid. He's going to do that. Yeah. Well, he's queen f3 just very slowly. Now rook c2. Two plate. Well, at least there's no rook takes pawn because uh, the knight e7 is uh, a nasty little check. He set a devious trap with a3. Oh. Bishop c5, knight f6, uh, queen f6. Knight e7, bishop e7. But hang on. There must be some trick. No, rook, rook d2. Rook d2. Okay, yes, rook d2 is very nice. Not the, not the fanciest trick, but. Oh, but it's good enough. Gets taken, knight e7, and rook c1, king g2. Everything's covered. His hand is stretched. Is he going to play it? <coughs> he has to play it, because otherwise. His uh, play. Well, looks like his hand was going for b4. Yeah. 
Okay, so the idea is after rook takes pawn, you've got a knight e7 check. Mm -hmm. But if bishop takes pawn, is there queen takes? Yes. Mm. Let's just very briefly show this was the trick. Bishop f8, oh, and there's the, there's the knight fork. King g2, queen c4, mistake. That's it. Game over. Anish Giri has won the Armageddon game, so he picks up one and a half points. Um, again, another impressive game from the white side. Yeah, I thought you were going to say for, from Giri, but yeah, the classical wasn't that impressive. But white so far is crushing, is crushing indeed. Yeah. In the Armageddon, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, after that hot racing game, we should check in on everyone again. Back to the something, classical. Something a little slower. Let's go to Vichy Anand against MBL because uh, that looked like Vichy was going to be picking up the three points with a nice smooth win. And yeah, two pawns up. No, just one. Just He's one. Still... I was curious if after rook d4, I could play rook c4, but I was wondering if can just give this pawn and run. Yes. Looks very scary, doesn't it? Uh -huh. It looks great. You mm. know, I have this saying in, in end games, it's not the quantity of pawns, it's the quality. And those, oh. those two pawns, amazing. Never heard of it. Uh -huh. um. Yeah. I'm sorry, Jan, you might be subjected to some of my sayings. No, no. <laughs> much appreciated. <laughs> and uh, yeah, look we're who's going, here. Yeah, we're going to take a Are you short looking pause. for the bathroom or are you joining us? <laughs> no, oh, we're not used to company. Uh, you have no. to come sit here, Anish. Let's get it over with, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We're back and we are joined by a very special guest, uh, Anish Giri, who has just defeated Vasilin Topalov in the Armageddon match in a very nice game, we have to say. How are you feeling? Well, I'm uh, happy that I won the Armageddon game. I, I feel uh, the main focus is on the classical um, game mm -hmm. still. And there I should have nothing to be proud of. Uh, but I think still good to end the day on a high. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you like to talk us through a little bit of your game? Uh, yeah, the critical the moments? Game uh, I, I got, got this opportunity, opportunity to go for e4. Okay. Uh, which I, I felt it's a little miserable, but I still wanted to try it. At which, which point? A4? Yeah, a4. I mean, so I, I, I went to a4. 
I remember the computer sort of likes that mode. Mm -hmm. A6, yeah, and then I was wondering why I provoked B5. I think I just provoked to provoke, but I just got seduced by the idea of A4 um, when I can maybe press against A6 pawn, but this is just not the way to go. I have also weakness on B2, and it's just just not it. It's just not the right plan, I feel. And then I think he, he has a very comfortable draw. At one point, I was even... Um, I was, I was worried, but I was just not happy at all. I was happy that uh, I think uh, I think uh, once knight goes to c4, uh, yeah, yeah I just don't have the pressure. Maybe if I get all the time in the world, I can press the a6 pawn, but this is just just not the right mm -hmm. plan in this position. Yeah. Are you ever a bit concerned when you do this e3 and give up the bishop and double the pawns? I understand computers like it, but deep down inside, do you worry a little bit? I have this isolated pawn on d4, and I give up this. Uh, I didn't worry uh, about it un until I lost one game with white. Uh, actually uh, in, in a, ra a rapid game and then i realized that yeah that there is some risk as well because if you for example i traded the rooks and the queens and then the guy went some h6 g5 mm. and two bishops pressed against the d4 pawn and won uh, so at the same time white has some potential for whatever kingside attack with if you keep uh, enough pieces on the board i i won a nice game against vichy as well here so i have like a good game a bad game and a miserable game now as well but the second game, though, in the same line was good. Uh, but I have to say there he played uh, e takes d5, which is less solid. Yeah. And uh, this gives me more, uh, more uh, opportunities for creative play. Mm -hmm. and, and how did you find the Armageddon format? I mean, what was it like? Did yeah, the have I have to say I have one issue with this whole Armageddon thing. Uh, it's all great. The whole system is fantastic. Just that... Um, the ratings are really important, or maybe they are less so now than a few years ago, but still. And somehow the Armageddon doesn't impact the rating. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel if standings and ratings don't go together, there is some... Uh, there's a bit of an issue there. Uh, they have to be aligned. Because uh, standing and rating has to be the same thing somehow. So I, I feel that's a small issue with the format. Uh, but. Otherwise, it's, it's really good because you play a miserable game like that and then you get a chance to redeem yourself <laughs> or or get properly punished and <laughs> then you lose at least. <laughs> then you're like early, you know. So and I think it's nice that, you know, in, because in chess we don't have that. But in other sports like in tennis, there's always a winner or a loser. I think it's it's a normal, normal yeah. thing. It's, it's great. Uh, that argument with the ratings also applies to the three point system. system no, exactly. like here it's a bit different, but in general, exactly. if you get three for a win and one for a draw. I mean, it's tricky because people care about both the ratings and the standings, so yes. interests are not aligned. Yeah, it's yes, yeah. yes, exactly. That, I, I feel the, there has to be, um, ideally, like this is, the system is better than, I mean, it's uh, good as it is, but uh, if the ratings are somehow also aligned, that would make it perf perfect um, completely. Mm -hmm. And uh, going back to the Armageddon game, um, at what point do you think that things started to go wrong? Uh, I uh, was not sure, well, I, I didn't like rook takes 5 at all. Uh, I I what think yeah, instead of uh, bishop okay, takes yeah, c5, yeah. I felt. Uh, yeah, and if knight g5, there's bishop b4. And in general, bishop b4 is a bit of a of a thing. And um, if I play queen d3 instead of knight g5, maybe he has maybe knight e4, maybe, I don't know. Maybe there is some knight g3-ish things, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was not sure. Uh, maybe knight g5 I have. I have knight g5, yeah? Knight g5 is very strong. Yeah, knight e4 is not good. So don't go knight e4. Uh, yeah, I would have gone probably knight queen d3. But uh, also, I think instead of a6, uh, I recollect some lines where black goes like cd4, knight d4, bishop b4, and uh, yeah, such a position. And it's a lot more dry um, because he gets a weakness on, on c3. I mean, I get that weakness. And then it's hard because once he took with a rook, his bishop is very bad. And then at some point, I just collect the d5 pawn. I just attack it. One, two, three, four two, three, four, five times. He can only protect it four times, and I just collect this. You know, I can still do these things. When pawns are hanging, I'm collecting them. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is just... Oh, there was one nice moment, though. This b4 was nice, because I, I, I kind of... Yeah, yeah, after bishop c5, I kind of wanted to do something stupid instead, and suddenly I noticed I have... I want to go rook d2 instead. I wanted to yeah, I wanted to... to that was a, uh, the plan A, uh, but then I realized... That I was wondering after rook d2, rook takes d2, uh, if there are any drawing chances with knight e7, bishop e7, queen c6, rook b2, uh, some fortress chances. But uh, even even uh, if something else, anyway, b4 is really, really strong. 
because I gain temp tempo because he has to actually just go back. He doesn't have bishop f2 nor rook f2, which I was very happy to see. And I think when I got that extra tempo in, then I again was back in full control and uh, position is just really bad for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice moment, nice game. And uh, yeah, so so tomorrow you'll be facing off against. Um, who are we going to be playing? Wang Hao, okay, so Wang Hao, yeah. yeah. I was very surprised in that game. Uh, he, it was so ugly when he took on d5 with the knight. The choice between bishop d5 and knight d5 was so juicy. And I, I actually liked knight d5 of Magnus. I thought it was really good. But go rook c1 first, right? Yeah, that's what I've been talking about. Rook c1, and I don't think black is in time to... Yeah, he just doesn't have a move now, because he doesn't get that thing. Queen d5, queen d7, rook c5. Yeah, and if b6... Yeah, just rook c6. Yeah, it's a much better version. Uh, also, e3, queen d7, queen b5 now. Take, take, yeah. and then rook c6. Yeah, you, you just get a better... I think he had some sort of a... Like a little... He maybe wanted rook c1 first. Maybe he thought it doesn't matter. And... Because suddenly now, he, the guy got queen to d7, right? Yeah, and, and then bishop e7 very strong. strong. Yeah, one bishop e7 yeah. was there. I felt he... And now he's very solid. But now, he, did he take on c6? But now bc, no? What are we talking about now? This is just... Rock solid. Yeah, wow. No, that was a missed opportunity because uh, it could have been very pretty uh, if the d5 pawn falls. And also, bishop takes d5 maybe also possible, yeah? If uh, I don't know how. Mm -hmm. It was probably less good, but. Uh, Both look tempting. It's 95 rook c1. I think yeah, it's just winning move it's, it's, by move. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so he might have just missed an opportunity there. Um, yeah, in classical chess. Um, because in Rapid and Blitz, like, you have so many games a day, you can forget about these things. But in classical chess, like, every such decision is so valuable and somehow yeah i don't know that's that's a small um, the good thing and the bad thing about the classic chess you know like so, so one little slip and and yeah the whole day is uh, different how do you feel about all the rapid and blitz you've become or i think you've also made an effort to become stronger than and play them more but is your heart still in classical or do you my heart is no longer here <laughs> my heart is no longer here so which time it's no longer you chess prefer? or uh, whatever really? champions tour uh is playing. That's uh, that's where my heart is. Understood. Uh-huh. <laughs> whatever <laughs> courses Chesapeake is producing, that's where my heart is. And whatever age of Magnus app you want to play, that's where my heart is. Uh -huh. So okay. your heart is more connected to your passing <laughs> your wallet <laughs> <laughs> than to the time control. No, but honestly, um, honestly, uh, there are still a few great uh, um, classical tournaments uh, like Norway Chess, like Lekanze. And it's really wonderful that we preserve that uh, tradition as well, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Beautiful. Anything to sell? Uh, <laughs> any new courses? <laughs> something more to sell? <laughs> 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 that water you are drinking, uh, you, you, you're really like, yeah, you're really happy with that, no? It's, it's, it's both. It's like, it's the iced tea and the water in one. Mm. It's great, but I need, I need a little more, more iced tea punch. Like, cause I can it's, it's your last year as a commentator, Jan. Bye-bye. It, it's, it's great, <laughs> just... I up the iced tea part a little bit. <laughs> um, but no. I, I nice. can advocate for the pure still water. That's pure water. No, yeah. really cool, really cool. I also like, you know, just, just the whole thing. The, just the design also, there's little yeah. drop here, the Norwegian house, beautiful Norwegian house. Yeah. But one thing I'm kind of curious character. about is <laughs> because this, this kind of tournament has many kind of aspects to it. Of course, you had the blitz, you know, on day one. And now you have the classical portion, and of course you have to be ready with the Armageddon. I mean, how do you prepare for that? Or is it just not something Yeah, I, I, I guess, to be honest, I have that at the back of my mind a little bit. Um, I guess most players do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not like preparing a lot for the Armageddon, but I mean, it's inevitable, I guess. I, I don't know how it's for others, but for me, I had some thoughts today also. I could do this, I could do that. I had a few options mapped out. Um, mm -hmm. Finally, I played the same thing I played in the classical, um, but uh, I also had other options. Okay. So, uh, definitely something to have at the back of the mind. And, and uh, well, well, hopefully you'll be in an equally happy mood tomorrow when you face Wang Hao. Hopefully, hopefully now let's, uh, let's uh, switch back to Vichy and see how he's uh, yeah. tossing the boys around. How is, uh, how is Vichy doing? I mean, it looks very... I really like the move rook c1. I, I really like the combination of moves king h1 and rook c1 because when he played king h1, I was walking by. I like king f1 more. Um, yeah, we sure. I like king f1 more. Though. Yeah, uh, but uh, king h1 is stronger because it provokes queen f2 against which he had rook c1 and that's very strong because now he forces rook d6 ed. 
And I think this is just, this looks lost. So very clever to provoke that queen f2 and see beyond. This is like the difference between really strong players and uh, uh, less strong players, because less strong players, they see queen f2, and they think like, uh, queen f2, let's play king f1. Okay, let's play king f1. Yeah, but the very strong player, they just go a step beyond. They see queen f2, and then they think like, but really, is really queen f2 the move? And then they, they see rook c1, so... So I really strong players calculate one move further. Exactly, exactly. And I also was really, um, I, I think the turning point was where we should got e5. That was the first first tactic that, that uh, Maxim missed. Because I think if there he takes on d6 instead. Uh, so he, er, yeah, yeah, no, so, so queen d2 was very uh, fancy. Yeah, then rook d6 before knight e5. Yeah, and here knight c6 was probably a blunder of e5. I assume he missed e5. Because here probably if he takes on d6 twice and goes some g5 or rook c8, very good drawing chances. I, I think this... I don't know if it's actually that good drawing chances, but I think this would have been your preference over allowing e5. I think he missed e5. I think that's the typical shot you miss. And then rook c1, yeah, those. And I assume she's converting it clean, or? Yeah, not yeah. completely winning out. In the end, yeah? Yeah, just the two pawns, right? Yeah, this is the position. Well, it can, but he has a lot of time. Yeah, it can, of course, still, because they're, they're not really rolling just yet. Uh, so practically speaking, it's possible. But uh, Black's counterplay is also very, uh, very not there uh, at the moment. Can you just not trade off uh, knights? Okay, knight. Knight c6. Knight c6, and then. Can't you? It does work for me. Mm? Mm. Mm, yeah, but maybe I will play king of. I don't know. Yeah, even rook c7, ask a question. Yeah, but maybe then king e6 and e4 or something. Yeah. Uh, rook c6, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd, I, I, w I would guess multiple um, uh, options are there. But I mean, it's, it's, let's say it's not a position where you can be 100% sure he wins. Mm. Um, but yeah, oh, rook c7 is very, it says rook c7 is very good, of course. Okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it, he's going to win this game for sure. 95 coming. And this cutting of the king is just very, very smooth. Yeah, it's completely winning, actually. Mm. Also, a very, very impressive game from uh, Vichy. Yeah, no, it's uh, just, uh, I mean, he's making good moves, just what can you do? Yeah, so uh, I'm just curious. So, so when, when you're walking past, past looking at his game, you're actually calculating lines for him? Uh, no, no, that's, that's, what, that's why I wasn't looking at one. I didn't really calculate <laughs> the lines. I just, uh, and also at that point, I think I already finished my game, sort of, oh, okay. or, or was about to. So yeah, I just, oh, he even resigned, yeah. Also, Wesley is completely winning, right, from the opening. This should be 6CB, just such a beautiful... Position. Yeah, computer didn't like this, whatever he did, bishop c4, it was just saying knight c4 and he was much, much better, but... Uh -huh. But wasn't it great what he did as well? Yeah, here there's this weird line, rook a c8 and queen b3, which looks normal, then knight a7, and all of a sudden black is fine, but... But it's like a very co coincidence kind of thing, yeah, right? Because strategically you are lost, like, completely on the all sides of the board, even now I don't understand. So if I take on e6, yeah, takes, 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 rook a c1, let's say. And knight b1, uh, and let's say knight b1 or something. Not just going to collect everything. Let's say he barely manages. Yeah, uh, some insane stuff here. Rook d7 should be four. Yeah, yeah, I'm not able to consolidate actually. Um, yeah, it's uh, important to play good chess. <laughs> but I, I think strategically he's kind of half lost here, and uh, that's what happened in the game also. Um, hmm. Wesley looking strong. Mm. Yeah, Wesley looks very happy generally. Like I saw him yesterday, uh, he's just very happy. Yeah. Must be nice. Mm. Well, I noticed he kind of recently he's been playing a lot more aggressively. Like, you know, he's been grabbing pawns, calculating deeply. But you know, I remember when he played not so aggressively at some point, he was 28 30, yeah, something. Yeah, in 2016, yeah, he was, he was doing really not aggressive. Was he was really not aggressive, but he was just crushing everyone. So I think Wesley is just very, very strong. Very, very strong. And Vichy won, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vichy is now lecturing Maxim. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First move. Maybe e5 is more solid. Yeah. <laughs> so now, after I go bishop e5, I trade the bishops and I go c4, already have more space. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then just and let the rest You can try knight d7. You're going to implement. Knight d2, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Jan is uh, actually phenomenal at lip reading. Yeah, yeah. yesterday he called me out, yeah? With yeah. My, no, but you, you have but no, I was expecting no, the other draw, so I got it slightly wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah but we don't know what I will be talking about actually yesterday with Wesley. I actually told Wesley not to go in for the Berlin because I've got D6, which he played himself against Aryan and won. So I warned him. I said that if you're going to play the Berlin draw, 
I'm going to punish you with d6. So you, you better do something else. I think he played 1d4, and he found the drawing the Grunfeld. So. so you gave him a warning. I gave him a warning, yes. <laughs> but it was clear, because uh, at that point... He probably knows exactly what to do after d6, no? He's played that yeah, yeah, yeah. so many times. Yeah, 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 it was a joke. But uh, at that point, it was clear that he probably is going to go for a draw with the white pieces, because he was clinching the first place, and I was clinching my extra white. So it's clear that uh, we, we would Yeah, yeah it seemed like it was. Yeah. Yeah, whereas interest, uh, yeah. it was just yeah. mocking. <laughs> um, but he's, yeah, he's rolling, it will take a while. But, but by the way, like he's uh, is this that easy? Because, or, or like how winning is this? It's completely, completely winning or is it just winning? Plus two winning, which maybe is not that completely winning with... Yeah, I'm wondering, yeah. If, like, okay, he will win, of course, but some conversion has to happen. Yeah. Um, the rook comes here, there's knight c4, so yeah, you have to... Yeah, you, maybe like you do knight f1, e3 at some point, or send it uh, that way, I don't know. Yeah, so my five. Yeah, it's... Uh, okay, he should probably win, also he has more time, and he's very, very strong. But, uh, okay, some fight still remaining. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> thanks a lot, Anish. I'm sure you have to go to... to Mbess, or... Other duties, so thanks, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> Not sure that's I think I was embassing right here, right now. I think now it's, it's my job to prepare, done. prepare for, for my guest tomorrow. Rest and prepare. Yes, yes. So, thank, thank you so, so much for joining. joining. Thank you. And This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Seriously? Checkmate. Aim Chess is an intelligent system that analyzes your game, prevents mistakes, and develops recommendations for improving your skill. Phew. Okay, so let's send a challenge. Challenging. Nice graphics, easy to see. Oh, what are you thinking about? You're looking how it can be the most painful? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. fine. <laughs> that I give up a phone. He wants to be even rude.
Welcome back to round one of Norway Chess. And uh, during our break, we actually had another result happen. Magnus Carlsen against Wang Hao. We thought the game would end in a draw. Jan. It did end in a draw. And Magnus, he won't be happy about this. He will look back to this moment. In particular, on move 18, where it feels like he just let a great opportunity pass when he played e3, allowing Wang Hao to get this good defensive setup with queen d7, rook d8, and then the key move, bishop to e7, stopping any rook c5s. Well, had he started with rook c1 here, rook fc1 in particular, it's unclear what black can do. If bishop e7, queen b5 picks up the pawn, and if queen d7, rook c5 does the same thing. So missed opportunity there for the world champion. He will try to at least win the Armageddon. Mm -hmm. But and were there any chances towards the end? Um, because when we saw it, it was pretty much a um, very straight case of it being totally equal. Yeah, now black covers all the squares, so I guess it's already an uphill battle to make anything happen here. Wang Hao played nicely as well, maneuvering the rook to b6. Mm -hmm. No, it seemed like there's just no way to make progress. Carlson changed the structure, but allowed black to exchange everything and yeah just that was it good defense by Wang Hao when given the chance but Magnus will look back to this opportunity he missed yeah uh, especially with the white pieces as well and uh, we do have to remind ourselves of the scoring system a win in the classical game would have given Magnus Carlsen three points but now it goes to Armageddon where Magnus will play with 10 minutes and Wang Hao with seven minutes. And the players do get a one second increment, but this is only added after move 40. But to compensate for Black's time deficit, Black will receive draw odds. And the scoring system is that an Armageddon win will count for one and a half points, while a loss is just one point. So it's gonna be an exciting match and we will follow that game when it takes place. But for now, the players will be having a short rest and there is still one classical game remaining, and that's between Wesley So and Timur Rajabov. Yeah, Vichy Anand has won his game, already giving interviews, so that leaves us with this last game, where Wesley seems to have a big advantage, but the fight is still on. It's move 33, Wesley So with 20 minutes, Timur Rajabov only with four minutes. Wesley also has an extra pawn, still, some activity for the black pieces. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Apologies. And it ain't it ain't over yet. No, it isn't. It isn't over. But uh, one thing to also mention that in the classical portion, once the players reach move forty, they do get a ten second increment. So it won't be as stressful as playing with no time added on the clock. But Call I, for a job of though is if he doesn't make great moves and finds all kinds of resources here in the next seven moves, he'll just be lost. Wesley will take up, pick up another pawn, and will be game over. Well, so he really needs to play well. No, it's uh, it's his move, and let's uh, let's have a go at finding a great move. The computer says rook c4 is an option, but then the knight jumps to a5, attacking this rook, and I don't even know how black is supposed to mix it. Pawn to e4. All kinds of craziness here. This is the computer line, queen to e2 and knight to d4, trying to hang in there. But okay. Rajav will have to calculate all of this. I guess the point is now this knight is hanging at the end of the line. But are, are you forced to put the queen on e2? So this uh, does look like a, a nice line, but... But yeah. With the computer on, it's, it's a different game as usual. Queen d2, e3, and all of a sudden, it finds counterplay. e3? Don't ask me ah, why. Ah, okay. Because after they I have bishop takes, bishop takes b4. Yeah. Very nice counter shot. And is this the only move to survive? Because this is a very deep calculation. Yeah, rook c4 isn't the only move, and it's still trouble for black. But he's played rook c4. Mm -hmm. Now let's see if Wesley manages to maneuver. Well, I have the computer running. I can also tell you the first line. It's knight a5, pawn to e4, and now rook to e2. 
not removing the queen, but counterattacking here. Mm -hmm. The chaos continues, but white should stay on top. Wesley's strong. He might just spot this, but it is far from an easy technical conversion. They both have to calculate a lot of lines here. Yeah. Any other, any other moves that could kind of maybe keep control? Because um, bearing in mind that uh, Rajabov has uh, just over two and a half minutes, I would be tempted not to allow e4. It's hard to stop, though. I thought Compi also says rookie two, rookie which two. looks more in this vein of consolidating than after e4. But once again, it's tactical. He wants knight to d2. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't spot that one. Yeah. Okay. See how so Wesley, Wesley has no choice but to enter into the crazy complications. He has time, though. Maybe he can just calculate them. He looks very relaxed, as Anish mentioned. Yeah, he does. He's just happy. Yeah, sometimes this is the key to playing great chess. Just being relaxed, happy, yeah. peaceful. And uh, he has all the time in the world to calculate his way out of trouble. Um, anything, anything to... I'm just trying to keep an eye on when the Magnus Armageddon starts, but I guess we'll see it on the screen. Yeah, don't worry, I will warn you in Excellent. 10 minutes. 10 minutes here will happen and uh, we will have full control over that. So not, not easy. Any candidate moves. So we have knight a5. Yeah, that's the obvious, the obvious one. move. Sometimes in time trouble, as you mentioned also, there is, or especially if your opponent's in time trouble, you're trying to avoid the forced lines, because I'm sure a travel right now is calculating knight a5, e4. Exactly. And sometimes it's harder than if your opponent makes a slow move, like, oh, queen e2, what am I supposed to do now? Exactly. But yeah, so what after queen e2, what is black going to do? <laughs> At first I thought it's not possible because of knight to d4, but okay, that's uh, jumping the gun a little bit too early. The knight needs to wait until... Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's still... Still rook takes. The pin. No, queen 2 is not so threatening, so any move. And the game continues, sort of. Of course, white is better, but if he wants to win it cleanly now, then I guess there's no way around calculating this line. Knight a5, e4 is to spot this rookie two shot. Yeah, I was wondering like if you could kind of like not enter the complications at all. So I like the queen e2 and I, I know that this is uh, not going to be very popular. But uh, and then move the rook out of the eye line. So just go rook cd2. And then we think about playing knight a5. <laughs> That's no calculation. Very, very slow plan. Um, <laughs> yes, I understand. I don't know. Wesley is a great calculator, so he has to, yeah, take a decision here if he wants to go for a, a practical approach or if he just feels. But I can just calculate this knight a5, e4, rook e2. Rook e2, this. yeah. Because then that's, that's the way to do it here. The rook is under attack, doesn't have any great squares to go to. Basically, yeah. this is the only free square, after which white would just take the pawn. So black would have to give up the exchange here, but it's not enough compensation. I guess he's trying to figure out all these things as we speak. Yeah. Unfortunately, the bishop and knight not coordinating well for Timor. And yeah, okay. So knight a5 is the move that we are looking for with the tactical counter strike of the rook. Going to e2, should black play e4. So. Yeah, it looks convincing. Is he going to do it? Is that the only way to kind of navigate that path after knight a5? Anything else? Does it land Wesley the rook in is under attack. Water? If it goes yeah. away, it's just a black position. Yeah, OK. It's that's uh, not very coordinated. And white can just win on peace activity. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Wesley, 
he's not afraid. Okay. No ghost goes knight a5, e4. e4. Now let's see if he and spots the star move. e2. Important to take this rook, not the other one, because rook e1. Then this guy would be under attack. That would be a big disaster. So rook e2. And this is the only way to... Yes. Queen e2. Queen e2 allows knight to g4. Uh, queen e2, knight e4. And queen d2, e3. Uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, what about if you go all the way back to queen f1? Yes. Yeah, not great. More trickery. Mm -hmm. yeah, queen f1. This guy is not protected. So Wesley has to find rook e2. More or less. That's the clean. This is the cleanest way to win. Clean it's win. the only way to win. Rick E2. Yeah, okay, and now it's on the board. I think it should be more than possible. I think it's just one of those moves that are difficult to spot in calculation. I know. He <laughs> seems lost in thought. Queen D2 could also be, be somewhat tempting. Okay, so how does that run? When this rook is trapped. So E3 is very much the only move. And pawn takes. Yeah. But here, yeah, yeah, I guess you get a feeling. The king is a little weak. The black pieces now are coordinating nicely. This knight is a little far away. I guess he will try to avoid that. And it's not so hard to calculate once you're here. Because it's all forced black. And after queen e2, he can resign or try e3. And queen e2, knight d4 is not so complex. I think he's going to do it, but he's taking his time. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think he will play that rook e2. I... I I think, uh, I think uh, Wesley has full control here. I don't think we need to doubt anything. And uh, for those of you wondering when the Armageddon game between Magnus and Wang Hao will start, it will start at uh, 10 to 9, so in six minutes. And, uh, and here comes the rook. Rook e2 on the board. Wesley so spots those opportunities. This is a tough spot for Rajabov because nothing really works with within the forced line. So he probably has to try to keep the tension, play a move like queen g6, which also doesn't really seem to work, unfortunately. But at least it's tricky. What, what is the trick? Rook I takes think. knight h4 and with threatening checkmate, rook takes h4. Then queen d3 and takes promise white white has rook, rook g4. g4 right and it continues but still this looks by far like the best chance yeah 93 is coming to defend yeah but at least from afar this ah. can look a little scary the king has to go here it's true very true and uh rajabov of course time is not his friend he has just under one and a half minutes in f five moves time he will get that 10 second increment have you ever played any time control similar to this i don't think so no i no. like it because there's this this big time travel which we're experiencing now around move 40 which can be quite exciting but i don't think i have no yeah mm. well now he's under a minute he has to make a move. One of the things that we noticed about Rajabov on the Champions Tour is that uh, incredibly calm, not phased by time travel at all. So, yeah. But having said that, he's not going to get any added time. So he has to make a move. What do you think? 27 seconds to make, was it four moves? I think all the Five. end games are lost. So he will try 20 this seconds G6 and hope for the best no he doesn't he's gonna lose on time nah. if he doesn't speed up he has to make now it's he has to make five moves five moves ooh, in 10 ooh, seconds ooh. come on make a no. move he doesn't They're get any not used added to it time anymore. He, he goes rook to e8 but that just allows no, it takes his rook. rook to be taken and then the end game looks fairly hopeless. If takes, takes, and takes. then knight. And yeah. All the pawns are dropping. Okay, he's got three seconds 
Yeah, that doesn't left. help. It might not be mechanically possible to make it to the time okay, control. Okay, is he going to do this? I have. But he's also like five pawns down. And, and oh, resides. there you go. The hand is outstretched. Yeah, he lost on time. Okay, done. I think he might have resigned even, but yeah, it's no big difference. Yeah. And uh, Wesley So, you know, he is a man on form. Yesterday he won the Blitz tournament with a five-win streak. Very impressive. And uh, today he starts off with a bang, defeating Timur Rajabov in the classical portion. So he nets three points. Yeah, he has white against Magnus tomorrow because of his strategy to get white against Magnus. And yeah, off to a flying start, Mr. So. Looking yeah. good. Looking very good. And uh, this means that we are all primed and ready after that dramatic finish from Wesley and Timor to uh, start watching the Armageddon between Magnus Carlsen and Wang Hao. Let's go. Players discussing here what they could have done. Go on, Jan, treat us to your lip reading skill. I got nothing. <laughs> 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 Wesley really enjoys that C3 <laughs> point. Uh. Yeah. Yes. So um, maybe the Rajabov strategy of pushing the A pawn all the way to A3 wasn't the best. Yeah, but uh, Wesley was just very trouble. convincing, right? It's just very precise, yeah. Mm. Might be a bit early. But even before this round, I said, okay, of course, Magnus is always the favorite. But Wesley, Wesley is looking sharp. And if Wesley is in form, he doesn't lose many games. He's strong in Armageddon's. If he picks up some wins. Yeah. And I like the fact that he's changing up his style, you know. And uh, here we see Wang Hao getting ready to face off against Magnus. Has Magnus changed clothes? Looks like it. Yeah, he's ready for the fast and furious pace. And uh, once again, to remind ourselves of the Armageddon time controls, Magnus will start the game with 10 minutes on the clock, whilst Wang Hao will only have seven minutes. The players do get a one second increment. But this is added after move 40. And this is very important. Wang Hao will be the one receiving draw odds and they're off. And uh, this time we are seeing, is it going to be a Queen's Gambit declined? Catalan. Again, oh, Catalan. Give a check. Oh no, Bishop uh, E7. Wang Hao likes Bishop E7. Very classical. He lost the game in the candidates to Anish in one of the main lines here with DC and A6. But Magnus has played all kinds of goofy moves here, like Knight to A3, trying to mix it. And uh, speaking of uh, mixing it, is on the board. Yeah, Bishop D7. This line is supposed to be fine for Black. Carlsen won a game against Anish and Vike, so he probably has pleasant memories. I think he played this move a4 and yeah, now queen c2 or something. Mm -hmm. Probably should a3 first. Not supposed to be anything. But Magnus makes it something, as always. Mm. We'll see. Queen c2 on the board. Yeah, all of this was played against Anish, knight bd7. Looks like Van Hao, even though it was during his retirement, saw that game and is not particularly surprised by Carlsen's choice. BD7, Rook C1. I think they're still following that game. Mm -hmm. But when did the invites for Norway chess go out? I'm not sure. You think? I think it I might have been before Vike, so he started watching Vike, thinking, ah, I might have to play these guys again. Maybe. But uh, I, I think most of the top players, they keep their connection with the, yeah, yeah. the top I'm games. Kind of kidding, I'm sure he followed. Yeah. I also wasn't sure, well, maybe we can ask him one day, what the story with his retirement was like. Because first of all, we've talked, talked already about that. No one really retires. And sometimes out of the emotion after a bad tournament, people say, OK, I'm done with this stupid game. <laughs> but they keep coming back. <laughs> they keep getting offered one more tournament. And they're like, all right, that. And one then, last tournament. As always, like life has a way of kind of keeping you hooked. Well, chess has a way of keeping you hooked to the game. I wonder if Van Hau, after he got the call from Norway chess, he told his family, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. <laughs> um, 
That's a quote from a, a movie, but I don't know which one. I've heard it before. Godfather 3. Yeah. Okay, ED1. Magnus, not in a hurry to regain this pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Magnus feeling very comfortable there because uh, they say that the secret life of a uh, gambiteer is to win back the material you sacrificed. Mm. Um, Kaz knows playing with a playing with a peace trick. It seems like it's just it's just what you do nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is the way to calm the nerves. Apparently, that's what I've always done wrong. And uh, Wang Hao just under five minutes on the clock. And uh, Wang Hao to make a decision. I mean, is there, there's no immediate threat, so you can just C6. C6 is a little scary that this bishop has nowhere to go, but I guess the argument is if this bishop moves, he takes. If this knight moves, he takes the bishop. Yeah. So he doesn't need his bishop to have squares. There's also kind of like knight e5 ideas on the board, as you highlighted. Yeah, that and looks like a normal move. Takes b5. Yeah, b5 is always quite scary. Yeah. I guess he wants to take and play some position like this. But that's probably the best white can hope for in this line. He will eventually recapture as the center. Mm -hmm. Let's see if Magnus agrees. If he lets go of that black bishop. Yeah. What's happening? Magnus just thinking. Knight e5 looks very, very natural. Is there any other move to kind of play? Instead of capturing the bishop, I mean, I e4 know, is a threat. Knight d2 looks a bit passive then. Yeah, b5 just comes now. I think you gotta go knight e5 yeah. so yep. you can meet b5 with taking on c6. He's done it. Black should probably not take because now all of a sudden yeah, no, this either. bishop not having squares. Unless, unless you can set up some kind of fantastic pawn chain, but you're not going to do that. You need to get... No, you could try, but I think even if you got all this against the two bishops, white has too much power, fire power, power fire. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to do that. So, bishop takes bishop, we fully expect that to be played. And how does have this b5 option, at least the computer seems to like it. It's just such a strange move to play because you're allowing knight takes c6, takes, takes. Now the point is b4, giving up the rook here. And yeah, he's taken yeah, on g2, he's... which looked much more human. Now it's too late for b5 because then knight c6. But is it possible to go queen c7? Okay, so knight b6 mm. as you predicted. Yeah, he's played knight b6. Queen like 7 was possible. Well, yeah, and then I just so wanted to go b5. Oh, okay. uh, but okay, no, the but I, yeah. the knight uh -huh. just gets into d6, and this is why you don't play b5. Yeah, this is still fairly standard, but Magnus will be able to put a bit of pressure here if he gets his pawn to e4, stopping the other knight from doing anything active. Mm. He's taking a moment. Yeah, it's. Uh, but it feels like this is not a nice position for Wang Hao. No. Uh, there's a lot of uncomfortable pressure. White has the center. Yeah, e4 on played. the board. I think I probably would <laughs> try to move my knight back to d7, uh, knight f to d7. And yeah, that happened. OK. Now he's going to take on c4. Yeah. Maybe some pressure. Not unbearable, but. Combined with the extra time, still not a bad situation. I'm wondering if he's thinking about just going knight f3. Nobody takes the pawn. Queen takes. Okay, so Magnus no doubt has a fantastic position. I mean, but is there any chance for Wang Hao to set up some kind of defensive formation? Because yeah, I don't think he's in too too much trouble. <coughs> So one thing I kind of wanted to do is maybe f5, but yeah. <laughs> knight b5 
They can't quite do it yeah. yet. Knight f6. Knight f6, I'm not f3. sure, because f3 is something white wanted anyway. Now this knight seems a bit stuck here. Yeah. But white has some, such a nice plan of just putting a rook on b1 and putting the bishop on c5. Yeah, bishop c5, the knight comes back to d7. Seven. No okay. damage is done yet. See how Magnus handles it. Is queen b3 awkward now? Because if rook b8, there's an e5 winning the exchange. And yeah, he's played it. Ah, rook mm -hmm. d7, bishop c1. Bishop Shuffling f. the piece around. Yeah, full board vision from Magnus. And. Does it achieve anything though? Like bishop f4, queen c8. Maybe you can target the a5 pawn later. Maybe, Maybe just c8. go h6. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm really stuck for a move, and I uh, just... No, oh, h6 looks normal. Make a luft. Yeah. Stop bishop g5. Also make a move quickly. Yeah, he has to. How much time does he have? He's just under three minutes on the clock. But the bishop, the thing is, the bishop is coming to f4 and then to e5, and again, questions will be asked to the knight on f6. And I just love the fact that the queen is on the Goldilocks third row. You know, she can switch to... Oh, c5, queen. he's trying to break free. Oh. That is risky. Bishop f4. Queen goes, d takes c. The pawn might be dropping. Okay, but maybe this is a good practical idea. Because yeah. the position did look quite horrible. Pawn takes pawn now. He wasn't in the mood to wait passively for Magnus to improve his position mm. and it's always it depends how the game ends if you say uh, you should have waited passively or great practical decision very hard to say yeah but it felt really really unpleasant especially with uh, the clock ticking down at just under two minutes and they are on move 24 so still away from the golden move which is a uh, 440 and he's gone for rook c1. c1 he didn't take on c5 b6 okay i guess sooner or later but i don't understand rook why didn't he take on c5 probably likes this even better d takes c if rook takes c1 rook takes or queen takes maybe queen takes yeah and then maybe still pressure but not over yet Oh yeah, DC on the board. And it's looking great Rook for takes. the world champion. And now we're expecting queen takes rook to appear. Knight no, takes rook with takes rook. rook. If, if queen takes c5. You've got bishop e3. Ah, then he wants to go after these pawns. Yeah, that's on okay. the board. Looks pretty good indeed. Queen c6. Oh. I like queen b5. Just... Fix Offering the, the end game, fixing yeah, these fix pawns. the weakness and uh, good strategy. Take them later. Yeah, and yep, look at... Uh, here he goes. Look at the black knight. The black knight with just yeah. this out of play. It's knight f6 a little like, because the knight can get stuck here. Uh, now he has to fish for counter chances. But Magnus. Yeah, queen. Seems very determined. Queen c2, rook d2. Three, it's not going to be a repetition today two. because the, the king steps forward to do its defensive duties. And uh, queen takes pawn is going to be the move that Wang Hao has to meet. And also, there could be, there's, a, there's a threat of uh, rook to b8. Can you get? No, you can't get flashy. Not yet. No, it still work. And uh, Wang Hao just under a minute. How to how to break through? I'd have to take a step back. Still, really want to exchange queens. I think all the end games with these fixed pawns are more or less winning. But Wang Hao is not going to go along. At queen d3, trying to scare him here. But yeah. Yeah, maybe that's a good move. If queen c6, then we keep chasing queen d6. I like that idea. 
I'm not going to lie though, Jan, I was not drawn to Queen D3. I was looking at moves like G4. <laughs> yeah. But I like your move better. Keep yeah, control. I'm not sure about the right version, but this Queen on C3 is annoying. So Queen B3 or Queen D3. Queen D3 feels better. Mm -hmm. And so, so Queen D3 is a Magnus type of move. He, re he realizes that the end game is great for white, winning because of the black, the poor position of the black knight. Yeah, the problem is with queens on the king is a little too loose. So rook d6 or something, queen c2, there's always some nagging counterplay. Um, it's taking his time though. Yeah, he has the time to take. Um, I'm just wondering. Yeah, queen d3 plate. Yep, a nice, uh, good practical shot. Queen will probably step back to c6. Yeah, I don't know if the end games offer any hope now. He goes back to c7, c8, seven, c eight, yes. <coughs> and queen d6, I'm assuming. Oh no, he takes. Oh, tactics. Bishop takes. And if rook takes queen d8. Yeah. So black Good has off. to play like h6, but then the queen side drops. Nice spot. Oh, sorry, it's not on the board here. Takes b6. The point being, if this gets taken, there are back rank issues. Mm. Yeah, that would be a little bit of a disaster. So uh, Wang Hao says, nope, not going to fall for that Just one today. B7. What's the point? Wow. Ah, Bishop a5, Queen a7. That's a Hang trick. on a second. So Wang Hao has gone 11 seconds. Oh, he it's has, uh, it's 34, so he's got six, so 11 seconds to make six moves. Mm. Okay. Living on the edge, so queen d8 is going to be met by the knight retreat. Yep, important now. There's nothing attacked here, so the knight can just step in. Yep, and... Well, white can just move the bishop and be better. It's a good... It's a good thing to do. Uh, maybe make a surprising move. Move the bishop to e e3. Keep the bishop close, and because he's probably ready with the uh, if you play bishop d4, he's probably ready with rook d8 or something like that. I'm starting to learn about your strategy. If in time travel, shock them, and <laughs> before they recover from the shock, they lost some time. Exactly, exactly. They won't expect that move. Never. No. And also, this is a kind of a good safety first move and uh, this is one thing i found sitting next to david howell for over a year that uh, when you're feeling under the time pressure you have to kind of curl up into a little ball over protect and uh, start making commitments when you've passed the time control limit which is a move 40 and then you can think a little bit more with your lovely one second increment so magnus now coming to it's one minute on the time. clock but okay. That's also a good strategy, right? Make, yes. Make okay. the opponent sit there and wait. And uh, queen d4 played. So that and was the surprising d4, move. h6, and bishop takes pawn. Now there's no longer any checks on a7. Yeah. Well done. He's, uh, he's made it to move 36. He has yeah. eight seconds for the remainder. So I'm predicting king to g2. Yep, covering the h1 square. And how's going for a desperate counterattack? He's yeah. lost long term with the two missing pawns, of course. And Carlson's trying to tape con keep control. And uh, they've reached move 39. So one cows on five seconds. Oh, but this is it now. Carlson's forcing the endgame. And the A pawns will queen. So the world champion wins his Armageddon game. Yeah, more or less convincingly, I would say. I think he dominated. Mm. Big parts of it <clears throat> chose this yeah, line he had some experience with and Fang Hao got under pressure on the clock and on the board. Yeah. Oh, it Seems that? like the computer is saying after 95 this pawn to b5 was indeed the way. Takes, takes, and pawn to b4 with a mess. And then c3. Should be 2. Oh, rook, rook c8. c8. Yeah, then preparing c3. These pawns are so strong. Mm -hmm. 
There's something to learn. Unfortunately, a Wang Hao's expense, but I mean, I could, e I can imagine I could easily find myself in this type of position with the black pieces. And uh, 95 has some degree of poison, and this is a nice pattern to have in your memory bank to uh, have as an antidote. Yeah. Ugh, dude, a memory bank sounds scary. Sounds like wow. this villain from from Sherlock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right, Mickelson, isn't he? Oh, is that his? Uh, Real name. That's the actor. That's the Lars actor. Lars Mikkelsen. He's the ah, brother okay. of more acclaimed Mats Mikkelsen. Really? Yeah. But they they have like different heights. Like one is like super tall, and the other one is. Well, I'm assuming that Mats Mikkelsen is like super something. super short. Are they really siblings? <laughs> they, have, they have different heights. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm fairly sure they're brothers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. So uh, here is a recap of the round one results. And uh, after that Armageddon victory, Magnus Carlsen nets one and a half points. Wang Hao gets just the one. And Wesley So is one of the winners in the classical portion. So he nets the full three points against Timo Rajabov. Someone else who played a very impressive game was Vichy Anand. He defeated Maxim Vashelegraf in the classical portion. And uh, other Armageddon victors are Anish Giri and Shakriya Mamadarov. They take one and a half points. Ah, oh, exciting day of action. Oof, I'm not sure if I'll make it through, <laughs> through eight more of those. I need a little chess piece to, to fiddle with. <laughs> yeah, I think we all do. There, they're a bit they're big. A bit big. Yeah. But maybe this is the new trend. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see if we can get some. <laughs> Which piece do you choose? It has to be a pawn, it's right? A pawn. Yeah. Okay. I, I think you should do this in your next game. So, one for you, one for me. No, and you this is. <laughs> That's kind of annoying. It's too big, right? <laughs> yeah. Or, or maybe you can use it in a more threatening way when your opponent plays a good move. Are you sure? So Are you sure you want to do that? Okay, we'll, we'll look for smaller pawns. I think this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching the show. And join us again tomorrow at 5 p.m. In the meantime, check out all the exciting chessable courses out there. Anish Giri, I'm being told, has done some decent courses. Not as good as my E4, E5 course, but for his standards, pretty decent. So you can check those out. And then, if you still have time, Go on Chess24, I don't know if there's some Banter Blitz action today. You can challenge all the top stars as a premium member with the code Norway Chess 2022 You get 40% off. I'm not sure if this is a one-time offer, but you should definitely go for it right now and then. Check out all the video courses, challenging the Banter Blitzes. Enjoy all the action. We'll be back, what time? 5 p.m. tomorrow? Yeah, 5 p.m. or maybe just a bit before 5 p.m. See, we can get some water with more tea in there. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with my pure water. Thank you very much from Norway, from the icebergs. See you then. See you.